This is a very passionate podcast. Which I'm Marion. We're very passionate people. I'm very passionate. Very, very passionate about it. Very passionate people. She's one of the most passionate people. Ever. Or maybe you don't know shit and you want to learn from the best. Very passionate. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the I Am Very Passionate podcast. I was going to say to the Very Passionate podcast, but I guess that works too. I'm Jessica. I'm Mario. And we're having a morning this morning. Are we? I feel like I am. It's been a lot of heavy stuff. Oh, I guess. I don't know. I've just been emotional for the last week. Me too. So, I just told like, Mario I'm going to have my tear ducts removed. <laughs> I love crying, though. I hate it. It's the worst. Um, I just have the brightness down. Oh, okay. Um, but um, no, I um, I just had a very emotional week. So, like, I was like, I need to cry again this weekend. Uh-uh. Because, like, it's been building up and building up. And so uh-uh. I... We shove that shit down, INTJs. I oh, know. I let it out. I can't. It's so much. I feel so much, like, pressure in my head, and all I want to do is sleep, and I feel like it takes away from my productivity. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. I hate crying. I love it. And I cried all day yesterday, and then we went and saw, like, we had date night. So, uh, my husband's best friend and his wife, we all just vibe really, really well together. Like, it's such a good, they're just good people, and they're amazing to be around. And uh-huh we've been saying that we need to start seeing them like once a month because we'll go six months without seeing them and it's like we love spending time with them they don't have a lot of friends outside of us as far as couples go i don't know so we met them to go see just mercy last night with michael b jordan that was the movie he talked about on the read when he did the interview oh and it was so heavy and so good and so like the end was just like uplifting but also still angering it was just really good and i cried and i cried but there is a scene with the electric chair that I didn't watch. Ooh, I can't. I Because I look down. The green mile fucked me up. That's, oh my God, Mario, you're my sister. Because <laughs> I looked at Daniel and I, I said, I, I can't watch this. And he said, just close your eyes. I was like, no, no, no. I don't want to close my eyes in the dark. Like, that's too, I'm just going to look down. He's like, just let me know when it's over. I don't want to see it. And it's this really heavy moment. And then I didn't know because I was sitting on the opposite end of our friend, his wife, and she... We went to go get Carabas afterwards just to get some soup. And she was like, I couldn't watch it. I said, oh, my God, me either. She said, all I could think about was the Green Mile. I said, bitch, me too, where they didn't wet the sponge. Yes. And I was I'm like, I have PTSD from the Green Mile. Same. So I couldn't watch it. But it's also, like, really good because apparently, I don't know if this is a thing everywhere, but it was a thing in the movie. And then I read that... Um, is it? It was. It was an actual thing. Is like when they know that they're someone's going to be executed. I guess they can pick a song. They play a song, and the other inmates on death row will take their cups and like bang against the wall, like in protest. And you can actually hear it, like in the witness room. So you hear, like, yeah. So it's kind of their way of taking back some power. Mm-hmm. And so that was happening. So that's all I could hear. And I was overwhelmed, not even watching it. And I was like, I can't. I can't watch this. And I don't want to watch this. Oh my god! It was, but it's really, really good. It, it made me feel like there's still good people in this world actually fighting for justice because it's based on a real story. It's based on a real memoir. Mm-hmm. The story I read, fact versus fiction, last night is actually 100 percent like factual. They may have condensed it down in certain areas, but everything they talk about actually happened. Wow! It's a really good movie. Like Michael Jordan wait, plays the lawyer, right? Yes, and I would like wait for it to come out because I don't know that it's a watch in theaters i'm not a theater person anyway but like, like i don't like going to the movies i'll break down <laughs> uh i did <laughs> but also daniel and i were like yeah we could have waited for this but they wanted to go see it too and we wanted to see it too it's just that sometimes daniel and i are a big fan of like making nachos and watching movies we have a really big tv and yeah. a sound bar so it's like being in our own theater i thought about getting a sound bar i, I love it i daniel i was like whatever you want it get it but i'm like now i'm like is the sound bar hooked up because that's everything it's really good totally off topic yeah well we're um, done that was my little icebreaker moment just mercy is really good go see it if you don't like heavy shit wait till it comes out but you need to watch it my mind was blown this week because i found out that not everybody has an internal monologue in their head shut up what like sociopaths N- no not just a, just some people just a, not sociopaths just some people daniel doesn't like, you know how, like, we think in our head. Like, I think when when I think I'm talking to myself Absolutely. in my head. When All I day, read, I day. verbalize in my head. All day, every day. Some people don't. Some people just Daniel. concepts come to them. And yeah. I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to feel. Uh, I don't know how to think about it. I'm just shocked. You know how I talk about, and not just, like, concepts come to them in their head. It's just, like, people that don't have anxiety. I feel like it's an anxiety thing, too. Because Daniel wakes up every day just, like, happy and ready to go. And I'm like, how? How? 
And you, but like, does he talk to himself in his head at all? I he talks to himself to like self motivate. Like he told me when he gets to work, he parks the car and he's like, okay, we're gonna get this work done. We're gonna do good. To, like, but is that verbally or internally? It's verbally. Okay, no, but internally, does he? Think I don't think so. I can ask him. Yeah. You want me to ask him really quick? Uh, you don't have to nap up. I mean, it's Let up me to ask you. Him. Because I'm just like, what? How do people like? I, How do they function? Exactly, because okay. I'm constantly doing that. He says he has to work it out. Okay. Yeah. He's a good person. Though. Oh, stop! <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you the only time a concept has ever come into my head where I didn't have to think about it? Hmm. It's the xylem and phloem of a tree of a plant. Uh, so it's like the respiratory and blood circulation of a plant. Uh -huh. So nutrients come up through. I think it's the xylem and go out through the phylum. And that's the only concept that I ever saw, like, in my head as the professor was explaining it. I didn't have to work it out. Like, I didn't have to draw it out, didn't have to diagram it, didn't have to think about it, didn't have to compare. I just saw, like, the tree going in and going out. This is the only time ever that's happened to me. I, I mean, certain things will click. Uh, but, the inter no. but, like, that's not really what I mean by concept. Like, oh. like, you just have feelings or whatever, but you don't think about it. You just talk. Like, you don't think about what you say, but I don't know. Like, how it's described, it's 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 just like um, trying to think what it's going to be like once you're dead and no longer existing. People don't do that? What do you mean? Like, people don't think about that? No, I'm saying it's like it. So, like, you, it's hard to comprehend it because you know something so different. So, like, having always internalized something in my head, thinking that people, some people don't do that. I can't really comprehend it. You mean that specific topic or just like in general? That specific topic. Oh, people don't think about death? No, 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 in general. That, that's an example. Of, oh, it's okay. a similar okay, thing. Okay, okay. Like I'm saying, I can't comprehend people not thinking inside to themselves inside their head. Oh, yeah. I can't comprehend that. Just like I can't comprehend what it's like going to be like once I'm dead. But like people are, not everybody's an internal person. I get that. But still some people, like you don't think, like, I don't know, just... Not thinking in I, your I head have, at all. I have like, I what color is that? It's like an I, issue. exactly, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, oh, what color is that? Whatever. Just like silly things. Like, oh, that's mm -hmm. yellow. Like the day that's that I noticed all the random things at work. Like I thought about that all day, and I couldn't stop processing it. And mm -hmm. I know that everybody else walked away from our lunch table, like ah, la, la, la la la. And I was like, I'm still stuck on this. <laughs> like I can't stop <laughs> thinking about it, trying to understand it, trying to process it. Oh my god, I do feel lighter and better today, though. So That's maybe good. crying is good. I it's just, just built up. Like I just am not. I don't. I'm not used to crying as much as I have been. Like there was a point in my life where I cried all the time, and I've been squashing that shit down for like ten years. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're ready? Let's get, yeah. Let's get started. We already started. Well, no. Let's get started with with icebreakers. Oh yeah, icebreakers. <laughs> I added some this morning. All right. So um, first, I want to talk about Nikki tutorials. Okay. So I was very impressed with her video. She did a uh, follow-up. Yeah, we're talking about the follow-up. So she did a follow-up to her coming out video. And she just talked about... I loved, I loved it. While doing her makeup, she just talked about what happened, the response, but also people coming after people claiming they're the person who was blackmailing her. And we all learned from don't fuck with cats, so it's never a good idea. It's Absolutely. It's still cyberbullying. We shouldn't do that. And she said none of the people who said it are correct, but on top of that, oh, yeah. this is somebody I don't even know. Oh, scary. And I don't like she's not pursuing anything with this legally i don't think no she said that she wasn't but she said like just the idea of knowing that she could yeah knowing that she could and him knowing that she could ruin his life at yeah. any moment because of is punishment end. enough and i've had so much respect for that because i i am the person that's like yeah okay you fucked me over but i'm not gonna fuck you over like i'm not gonna swoop to that level i'm not gonna um come back at you i'm not real big on that because it doesn't feel comfortable because it's basically doing the same thing that they just did to you right and that's not and it made you feel so terrible how could you do that to somebody else exactly so i really respected that i had to watch it twice though because i was like oh, i don't know what i'm feeling but i also my favorite thing about the video though was that she acknowledged her privilege and said i am I super thought about lucky you when she said that. and i said okay she's doing it the right way yeah because she's i'm super lucky i have a mother who's super mother she highlighted I have everything family that, that like everything that about. i talked about like yeah. she has all these privileges she's going to yeah. be fine and she acknowledged it and i think i, I don't know that meant a lot to me oh i know saying, okay, i thought good. about she's, you because when people acknowledge their privilege especially people have who have extreme privilege, privilege it really helps put things in perspective for other people that like she's a very special circumstance but yeah. this is not how it always She's happens. She's an outlier. That's my favorite word. She's like, the outlier. When people used to do like the coming out videos, people were like, oh, this is how it always is going to be. No, that's not how it always is. This is just happens to be usually 
the more positive situation. Because if it's a bad situation, people usually aren't going to upload it. Yeah. So, like, people think, oh, yeah, that's how it's going to happen, but that's a skewed idea of it. Yeah. But I was very impressed with the video. I thought about you hardcore when she started talking about her privilege because I was watching it and going, like, okay, okay, yeah, it's good. I appreciate it. I like it, blah, blah, blah. And then she got to that part, and I was like, oh, Mario. Mar- this is everything that Mario said. And it just kind of, like, reconfirmed Mario's perspective on things. Yeah, I'm good. What can I say? Oh, my gosh. Uh, speaking <laughs> of coming out, uh, Demi, Demi Lovato talked about what it was like coming out to her parents. Oh, I didn't watch that. I saw the headline. What was what she say? Um, she said that she was very overwhelmed and shaking really, really hard. And that her dad, who is her stepdad, but her dad was like, okay, great. Like, just yeah. had a really calm reaction. And then her mom was visibly more upset and shaken, but she was like, I just want you to be happy. Because she was mm-hmm. like, I don't know what a family is going to be for me. I don't know if it's with a guy or a girl. I don't know if I'm going to have kids, but, like, I know that I'm attracted to both men and women. And her parents were, like, supportive and emotional. I mean, regardless of how you come out, I think for the most part, parents are emotional. Absolutely. Either they're emotional because they're happy that you feel comfortable telling them and that you're being, or they're emotional because they don't understand and they don't know what to do and they have to process that information. Definitely. Which is why in the back of my head, I'm always like, remember, your children could grow up and be like, I like both or I like one or I like the other because like you don't want it to be this shocking thing when they come tell you. Another thing though, I think a lot of people fail to remember when they come out is that for however many months, years, decades you've been identifying as this, Mm -hmm this is a brand new concept to this person that you're either queer, transgender, Mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So it's fair for them to have a shocked reaction. It's fair for them to be unable to accept it at first. Yeah. Because it took you so long to accept yourself for who you are. Yeah. You can't expect somebody to immediately. And if they do, that's so lucky and fantastic, but it's not always the case. I've never had a and coming out experience, so don't, I don't know. Don't feel let down. Don't feel disappointed. I mean, I, I guess you can feel disappointed, but don't feel like this is the end or it's never going to get better. Things can get better. Because sometimes people just need time to, to process. Oh, is this the week of finding out about coming out stories? Because I was watching Rylan Adams on YouTube, who is Shane Dawson's boyfriend. Uh-huh. And he did, like, this McDonald's mukbang with his whole family over Christmas. And he talked about how, like, he was living this full-on gay lifestyle in L.A. Because he's from, like, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And then when he told his parents, I, don't, it, I guess where they lived is privileged a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you make that face? Because the color is super, super liberal, too. Well, here's the thing is that, like, his family was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But then his brother was didn't understand, and he was like, well, I think if you lived in Colorado, you wouldn't be gay. Like, I think it's just happening because you're in L.A. And he, like, and they had this conversation about it where there was, like, no ill will, no anger. That was his brother's reaction to, like, knowing that his brother was different. And they're fine now. And his brother even said, like, I was selfishly looking at it from my perspective and not, like, my brother's perspective. And I was wrong. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I, it gives me a lot of hope right now. Like, things have been dark for me lately. So, all these, like, things are just really good. Now, I think that'd be a very good time to move from Demi Lovato coming out to Demi Lovato's performance. Oh my God, I can't talk about it. I was listening to it before you walked in. So the Grammys happened and it was a very emotional night for a lot of people. Like I think... On top of Kobe Bryant. Didn't like... I think it was like Demi, Camilla, um, Billie Eilish. I feel nothing when Camilla Cabello sings. And somebody else all cried. And I was like, whoa, like everybody's crying. Alicia Keys was high, so she wasn't crying. <laughs> Alicia Keys' performance was incredible, though. So good, right? Like, and okay. she was just like love and vibes everywhere. But like, that's what she did last time, too. Like, she's good at that. Like, she's just, let me, let me it's smoke all a couple about blunts. Music. Yeah. And then we're just going to chill and vibe and talk about this because music. That's what it's she's a great to be. host. Like, she's so good. She's really good. And then the floating, the piano thing. Yes. Oh, I love it so much. So, so what the, we were going to really just, we didn't watch the Grammys. We just watched the performances I can't of watch the Grammys. The Grammys guys. Um, um, and so we wanted to just touch on that a little bit. Uh, Lizzo opened the show and made a comment about Kobe Bryant right before she started. Which we are going to acknowledge his death, but the, we're going to give that its own moment to shine. Absolutely. And so her performance is amazing as usual. I loved it. That song, Cause I Love You, is so good. But like also the range, like the, the different spe- ends of the spectrum she goes to her like voice quickly. You're just like, holy shit. Like every time I see her sing it, I'm just like. I know I've talked about the Tiny Desk performance mm-hmm. before, but that probably, Because I Love You, was my favorite song from Tiny Desk. I still think that might be my favorite Lizzo song. My I favorite still soulmate. so hard to that song. Um, 
It's a, it's a good song. It's a good song. And then she so had an good. outfit change and did her dancing and still sang. And see, that's something that like really annoys me when people come for her like this. Like, mm-hmm. oh, she's fat, whatever. She she's unhealthy. But the fact is, Miss Bitch is her weight, able to sing, dance, play clarinet. Um, and not lose her voice and still sing, like fully sing. Yeah. And you don't hear like a <laughs> or anything. Which you do from some artists. Yeah. Um, Ariana did it. Ariana, yeah. She's like so in this breathy. Grammy performance, yeah. she was so breathy. And I was like, oh. But she also does a shit ton of movement just like Lizzo. Yeah. And so I expect breath to be in that. Like you can't have all this movement and dancing. Mm. But then like Lizzo doesn't sound like that. Like, because she she's been killing it. Dan- oh my God. She's so good. Uh, and then Ariana performed. Um, I don't know the order that it happened I watched them just on YouTube but Ariana performed and I, it was okay I'm not a big Ariana Grande fan I think I am. she has an amuse, amazing voice None I think of her, that's why I like her very little of her music speaks to me oh I do have a song I want you to listen to by her though okay what is it um, In My Head okay it's called In My Head it's on her last album I want you to listen to Dua Lipa's Physical Okay. I'm obsessed. Like, I'm so excited for her. Is it album. like a bop or is it like a... Because my song is a, is a deep song. It's a bop. It's a bop. Okay. Um, Let me add it to my Spotify super quickly because I will forget. I have the worst memory in the world, guys. <laughs> Dua Lipa. Is, I'm so ready for her college. new album. Like, this is a total side note. I am so excited for Dua Lipa's new album. Like, she's released three songs so far. You know who's a big Dua Lipa fan? Who? Kimmy. Really? Kimmy's huge. Like, they drove up and went to a concert, Kimmy and Quat. Yeah. Wow. What's it called? A uh, Physical. Physical. The album is Retro retro Nostalgia. No, no, no. Future Nostalgia. And the song Future Nostalgia is also mm-hmm. really good. And then I love Don't Start Now, which is like her first single. You and know what? Here's what I'm going to do. You're going to add the album? No, I'm going to create a playlist of just like Mario... Suggested songs? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Anyone's playing. Oh, my God. Don't copyright me, Danny. I love you. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, but it, it's just a good song. It, it reminds me a little bit of the Confessions album by Madonna. Ooh, um, nice. Which I love. It's my all-time favorite Madonna album. Which one? That's the, the, the That's disco That's the one that one. everyone says is like her best album? No, her best album, everyone says, is the Ray of Light. That, Ray of Light, yes. Um, I but I don't agree. I think Confessions ah, is a better album. No. I love Ray of Light. I love Ray of Light. It's my second favorite Madonna album. But my all-time favorite is Confessions. Is there anything else that you want me to add to Mario's playlist really quick? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Is there anything? There was another song I just recently started listening Did to. Did you listen to the Normani and um, Mega Blue Stallion? I forgot. You have to text it's me. It's such a bop. Okay, I'll send it to you now. And I'll, oh. Grammys and music, guys. It all ties together. Oh, Ru- These are all suggestions for you, too. <laughs> RuPaul's new album, I'm pretty feeling like... It's like a good gym album. It has a good beats. RuPaul? Yeah. Um, okay. But, What's your favorite song? Uh, I really like Bring Back My Girls. Okay. And I really like Ruby Red is Hot. Bring Back My Girls... And then Kesha's new album came out, and I haven't listened to it yet. Did you listen to it? No, I haven't. I'm so nervous. I am too because I'm that fucking clown that song, song, that yeah. fucking clown song, scared the shit. I love Raising Hell though. So if it's that vibe, it's the one with her and Big Frida. Yeah. No, no. no I'm sorry. I was thinking, what's the other RuPaul song you said? Oh, Ruby Red is hot. Ruby Red is hot. Well, or Ruby is hot. I think it's Ruby is hot. It's Ruby is hot, but Ruby. Ruby, Ruby is red hot. That's it. Ruby is red hot. Ruby. Ruby Red is her character. No, no, in, what's the actor? Ruby. Whatever, whoever that is, she's hot. There's somebody. Oh, Ruby, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose, she is hot. Woo! Yeah, no, Good. and she's also on her show Batwoman. Like Batwoman is now a lesbian, canonically in the show, even though in the comic book she's always been a lesbian. But now she's like she came out recently in an episode. I'm so sorry. Back to the Grammys. Those are music suggestions for the weekend. <laughs> So Ariana, Ariana's performance is okay. At first, I thought like she kind of looks thick in this dress. That like I think she's put on some weight, which is a good thing. But I don't think that's what I was saying. What were you- she was layered. She had an outfit underneath that red dress, and I was like, "This is a really like this. This dress is making her look really boxy." Okay, I know what you're talking about now. She was like, she started off singing like just normal, mm-hmm. and then like she changed and she was in like that pink frilly outfit. Mm-hmm. But she had that pink frilly outfit underneath it, apart from the jacket. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, she looks a little boxy in this. Like that's very weird. Usually Ariana looks amazing, and not that looking boxy makes you terrible or anything. No, no, no it's just not her normal style. It didn't look. And then she walked away, and it's like, oh, okay, that's why. But here's the thing: is that Ariana has said it before on like podcasts I've listened to, like when she goes on tour and she does performances, she doesn't really care. Like she says that she has an over overall vibe of what she wants and she has specific visions that have to get done she don't care what she wears she's like just put me in something it doesn't matter give me my mark because she says she's not a good dancer and she's insecure about that so she's like honestly none of that stuff really matters to me at the end of the day but i know it's important for a performance so it could just be that someone was like here throw this on over that she's like all right 
I just want to sing. Whatever. That's all she does. I mean, that's good. That's yeah. good. I am a big Ariana Grande fan, but I am a modern Ariana Grande fan. I didn't necessarily like her older stuff. Mm-hmm. I like a few songs of hers throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, what is it? Into You? Into You is such a good fucking song. I liked song. Into You. I liked Focus because it was a bop, but like her last album Side is to Side. my favorite. Side to Side, my daughter loved that song. Oh, what it is, so it? What is the one where the rockets come out of her titties? Oh, um, uh, That's a good song. Yeah. This is the mm-hmm. land. Da, da, da. Oh my God, what is it? I'm stronger than I've been before. Um, I don't remember. God, who? It, Whatever that song is. But it you know wasn't it. her song. It was someone else's song that she sang. What? She collabed with someone on that one. It was a famous, like, DJ. Hold on. Oh, it was a good-ass song, though. No, I love that song. It's um, in my Spotify. But... But I've never been a huge, like, oh, my God, I have to listen to every album or every song. Oh, me either. But Especially with her album, older stuff, she used to not enunciate at all. Listen, but this last album, Thank You, Next, I can listen to from beginning to end. And I can't even say that one about Sweetener. Like, I have favorite songs from Sweetener. Whatever. That one Nicki Minaj song, like, I don't know. It's weird. It's They're not friends. my thing. They are friends. So, cool. Throw each other. Like, I get it. It's fine. I would do the same thing. Mm-hmm. But Thank You, Next, I can listen to from beginning to end. And I have. And my favorite songs are the deep cuts. In my head is on that one. And I think you should listen to it. Okay. Because it was re- it's really good. And it relates to what we talked about. But um, her performance <laughs> is cool, I guess. I mean. <laughs> it's okay. We've seen it because she's been touring. and Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything we haven't seen before. Exactly. Like, we've seen it. We've seen it because it's the same variations of the same thing. And I get it. It was an important album for her. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, felt that way about Lizzo, too. Like, I don't know if people are requesting. Um, what's it called? Because I love you. No, truth hurts. Yeah, that's her biggest hit ever. So I she get has to it, but it. like she has other better songs. I, yeah. I love truth hurts, guys. Love it, but like there are better songs. Yeah, truth hurts is bomb. So when I'm saying that they're better, I mean that like it'll take you to a whole other universe. No, they're, like I think Water Me or whatever it is. Uh, that one recently, them. it was not. It was featured in like a Walmart commercial. Oh, and so yes. it started charting. Yeah, even though it's an old song, and it's a good song. Yeah, guys, just download her albums and listen. Yeah. Anyway, next performance. Um, so next, we wanted to talk about I guess Camila Cabello really quick. I'm not a big fan of hers. She like nor is <laughs> nor is Jessica. Uh, the performance was was nice. I, I mean, it, I understand why people were crying and emotional or whatever. And it's if so I liked hard. her as a person, this is how I feel. This is how I feel whenever you talk about Jeffrey Star, because uh, it's like I just don't care. Um, <laughs> That's fair. Um, no, but we're still going to talk about Jeffrey Star because, of course, it's your podcast too. But I do like Jeffrey Star. Though. I think he's stunning. But you know, Mr. Kate just redid a part of his house. Yeah, the spa. I didn't watch it, but oh. But you love Mr. K. I love Mr. K, but I'm not watching it. Okay. Um, right. I don't want anything to do with him. Okay. Uh, like, see. That's fine. I support Mr. K. I understand K. forgiveness and giving people chances. But he, I, when he first did his apology video about being racist, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to give him a chance. And mm-hmm. so I watched his I videos. I that video. And then more reports of him calling women, black women rats and cockroaches and but gorillas. That was still before. No. Yes. No, the thing with Jackie Ina was not. Yes. Where he had He got mad at the friend who um, followed her and followed him and was posting pictures of her because he collaborated with her. He's like, oh, is that gorilla off your feed yet? Because I want to follow you again. Like, I'm not going to support that. Like, oh, that's, that's not nice. I don't know the timeline, but I'm pretty sure that was. That was not. That was definitely her. after. And that's why I was like, okay, no, I'm wiping my hands of him. Like, I, I gave him a chance. Yeah. He proved himself to be who he really is again so I'm done like I don't I don't need to support him he's not like a, he's not a person in my life where I have to give them multiple chances he's an internet celebrity who's a millionaire That's he'll right. be fine without me but we're gonna go back to Camila Cabello now. sorry sorry <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> tangent um, Camila Cabello Listen. performed and sang to her dad Listen, it was beautiful she does have a really pretty voice I think she's a really beautiful woman she always looks strung out I think it's her eyes I guess so because she always have has big sleepy eyes you tend to look like that I guess so, but like every time I see her, I'm just like, is she on something, or is she coming off of something? Maybe she's on CBD, man. No, it's it's not CBD. CBD doesn't make you high. <laughs> like okay. she looks like she's been on like a, a coke binge, and so like oh, I don't she's get really coke dehydrated. Binge. I get like a pot. Like she had a couple. Blunts. Like she has like really deep dark bags. First of all, some of us can't help that. You can help that with makeup, girl. Especially it's if you're hormonal. a millionaire. If you're a millionaire, but, like, even I have good makeup products that cover my under eyes, and I still feel like they look hollow and no, shaded. they don't. Okay. I I see you every day. (laughs) (laughs) You can see me at my worst. Um, Here's the thing is that like I, I, this is, this is, I feel like a big year for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bring down other women. Yeah. 
I have heard about the racist things. I Multiple don't times. like it. I think it's not appropriate, especially because you are a woman of color. It's not okay. Um, I, I Listen, I think the song and its intention was beautiful. It was a song to her dad about how, like, he was always the first man in her life. I think it's beautiful. I think it's going to be played at a lot of weddings. Oh, I'm sure. Um, But I don't connect with her. So I didn't get out of it what other people got out of it. And it's yeah. not to say that if you cry during the performance. Your heart. Or, you, or, or, I'm, yeah. Your like, it's fine. You. Like, that's why we have musicians and people connect with some people and not others. It was very beautiful. She looked beautiful. She had a, a display of, like, videos with her dad. Mm -hmm. And it was very sweet. And I'm, I'm sure her dad appreciated it. Oh, yeah. He was crying. I'm sure it was an emotional song for her to write. I think it was a beautiful moment. But, like, I didn't connect to it. But, you know. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You go ahead, Camila. But don't be racist anymore. <laughs> Good luck with that. Oh, my God. People can change, Mario. <laughs> I don't have much to say about Tyler, the creator's performance. I clicked on it because I just looked up group Grammys. I, was like, I hey, didn't I'm even know he this. performed. And then Me she's either. like, oh, Tyler, I'm watching Tyler's. And I don't know what to think. And I was well, like, what? I Googled 2020 Grammy performances and Tyler, the creator, popped up. And I was like, you know what? Let me watch this. And then I sent it to Mario and he was watching it. And then I was like, what am I watching? What the fuck is happening? Because <laughs> I, listen, I've heard of Tyler, the creator. I know that I live in my own little bubble, but like. No, I've heard of him as well. I just didn't know that I knew any songs by him. I and don't so think I do. I turned to Daniel, who's my better half. I don't even understand why we're in a relationship because he's clearly better than me. But no, I'm just kidding. He's my partner. Um, <laughs> I. I, mean, I was, I was like, like, you're nodding. No, I'm joking. I'm totally <laughs> joking. I'm not. Mario's like, damn, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so if we're going to be honest. Uh, I asked him, I said, do you know who Tyler, the creator is? And he looked at me. He was like, yeah, I like him. And I went, okay, tell me about him. So this is what Daniel said. This is all, of course, his opinion. Don't come at me. He just said he's a kid who came out as bisexual. He's very influenced by white skater culture, but is, um, like, different, and his music is different, and Daniel Daniel likes him. So I feel mm -hmm. like Daniel likes him. There's some deepness going on there, because Daniel doesn't fuck with music unless yeah. there's some underlying thing. Maybe so. I just didn't connect. It's not, it could just be, it's not I, for me. I, maybe it was the perform. I feel like the visual stuff distracted me from the song, so maybe I need to listen to the music. Well, maybe so, because, like, this performance was odd. Like, was he weird. had, he looked like Miss J. That wig that you sent me, I said, because I called it a Sia wig. Because, you know, oh, no. Sia had that thing. And then when you sent me that wig, I was like, that's the wig! So, have you ever <laughs> seen America's Next Top Model? Miss, when Miss J was a judge, she yes. went through a period where she had a bowl cut. Yes. And I, I he looks it. like Miss J. Yeah. But just with a pink blonde, wig. Or platinum. blonde. Was it blonde? I thought it was pink. It was platinum. I'm a colorblind girl. Um... <laughs> But uh, it's platinum. I just need to get a shirt that says and that Ariana, and wear it every time we record. I'm colorblind girl. And Ariana's dress, the big fluffy one. Is that what you're talking about? Was that pink? No, it was like a lavender taupe. I was going to show you. <laughs> I was going to show you a picture, but then I was like, that defeats the purpose because I thought it was pink. Uh, it's fine. His and, leg was platinum. But anyway, he he still like he brought up boys to men, which is cool. Yep. Uh, but then, like, it cuts to him a close up on his face, and he's like making grunting like noises. It was weird. And I was like, yeah. "What the fuck?" I got am I Wolf watching? of Wall Street vibes when they were like, oh, "I've never seen Wolf of Wall Street." You should. All Ooh. I know is 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 uh, Leonardo gets a candle up his ass, and he actually did it. Um, and so you need to watch it. I think you would like it. But it's like being on one long drug trip. <laughs> I just thought of that meme I sent you about Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> If you knew the kind of shit Mario sends Oh, no, me. I'll share this shit. I'll no, share this shit. I'll talk about it. I just thought it. it was like, I can't even talk to you. Like, don't message me anymore tonight. <laughs> he only dates young girls. That's very true. And so there's this ASMR video. Can you video. see with the blue and the green back there? Does that make a difference in the hues for you? I guess so, yeah. But, like, right here, it looks super pink. Oh, that's the lighting, though. But this is, that's the wig color. Oh, okay. Yeah. But anyway, like, there's, like, buildings burning the background. And, like, he's dancing. It was just a strange it's performance. It's Earthquake. And I that? just didn't connect. It wasn't for me, and that's fine. I feel like not I, to dock him, knock him. No, no, no. Anything. Yeah, I feel like I like I said, I need to listen to his music. You just and not, my water. I'm sorry, she's not sorry. I need to, like Demi Lovato. Um, <laughs> I need to listen to his music and not see the visual because I feel like for artists, if I see the visual first, it heavily impacts your my perception, perception. and it shouldn't. Like You're, it was very much like a Lady Gaga, like early Lady Gaga performance, yeah. sort of like a weird thing, like what the fuck am I watching sort of thing. But if you have no knowledge of him, then it's like you can't vibe with him. Yeah, and it's just probably, probably it's probably how people who didn't know Gaga when Gaga first came out felt too. Yeah, because no, the first time I saw Gaga, I was like, what is 
what are you doing, man? What's going on? I don't, I don't get your shtick yet. Well, the first thing I saw with her was Poker Face. But then, like, when she did that performance where she hung herself at the VMAs. Just, was it, what came out first? Poker, Poker Face. Face. No, Just Dance. Just, just Dance. Just Dance was the first thing I saw of her. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is cute, but, like, I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like she was trying too hard. And she was. But... Yeah. But she openly says that. And now she's toned down a lot. Yeah. I mean, anyway. I still don't like her, but I no don't. shade. I, I, I mean, I respect what she's done. I respect yeah. her voice. Mario I, does just doesn't connect with. Her. I just I used to connect with her, but she. Yeah, the whole, I have I have my issues. The, the, um, you message me. Oh, she pretended to be bisexual to gain a fandom, and then came out as straight, and that at is, a gay pride parade. Right? Yes, like it was there, and then she had to delete the post. Mario had to tell me this. I didn't know she deleted the post, but it happened. I saw it. I took a screenshot. I should find it and post it. I feel like she said she was bisexual because she was experimenting, but not actually bisexual, and then like forgot and did that. I Maybe mean, so. And that I would have preferred her to acknowledge that than to just delete and not say anything. Yeah. Right. Maybe so. Just talk about it. Say, like, yeah, I thought I was bisexual. Yeah. I was experimenting with women back then. And now then, I love and the I realized, And I realized it's not for me. And right. I would have had so much more respect than yeah. just completely forgetting or just deleting it and pretending like it wasn't Because sad. every everybody experiments. Yeah, well, she, she you should experiment. She tweeted out a pride parade right. that said two, two straights enjoying the gay pride parade. And it was a picture of her and her, at the time, fiance, Taylor Kinney. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, what oh, a really, hottie. bitch? Oh, my God. I oh, find he's him, gorge. I find him my so mom's obsessed. attractive. He's on that Chicago show. He's he's that, he's like one of the white guys where I'm like, yes, I will sit on your face. No yeah. problem. No, he's so cute. Oh, my God. He's so attractive. He was in her video. That's how they met. Yeah. The you and I video. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I love that song. But see, the thing that really turned me against her at first was Born This Way. Um, oh, because of the Madonna thing? Well, not just that. That was, was one of the things that put a bad taste in my mouth. But she's like, oh, this is going to be my gay anthem. And I was like, you don't decide what's a gay anthem. The community decides what's a gay anthem. Yeah. I mean, they decided it's a gay anthem because she told them. It, it was a little condescending. But it was, it was very like, no, it was just very, you're coming into our space and telling us what we're going to do. And I don't appreciate that because that. you don't belong here. I love Born This Way. It's one of my favorite gym songs. Um, I Nothing lo- The only song I really like off that album is Government Hooker. Oh, oh, and Shaisa. See, I don't listen. I'm. I only know Gaga in the in the media. I don't know like deep cuts from her albums because I just never think to download albums. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I like this song. This is the song I want. So I'm not like a hardcore Gaga fan, but I do like her music. And then I heard she has a new album coming out this year, and like the title's like video games or something like that. I liked or... Joanne. I didn't give it a chance. I listened to Joanne. I didn't listen to Heart Pop either. But even Lady Gaga acknowledges that Heart Pop was terrible. Yeah, and Joanne was more of her getting back to her roots. I liked a lot of songs off Joanne, actually. Actually, Joanne. I did. I have Joanne. Uh, Or maybe it's called Gamer. I think her new album is supposed to be called Gamer. Gamer? Okay. Something like that. Anyway. Whatever. I'm not going to support it, but good for her. Um, I'll give it a shot. (laughs) Back to the Grammys. So that's all the performances other than Demi that we talked about, right? Billie Eilish. Talk- oh, Billie Eilish. Yeah. yeah. Um, Billie Eilish performed her song, um, When the Party's Over, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful song. That's what really the first performance I ever saw of her. She was on the Coward Stern or something, mm-hmm. and she performed it, and it was beautiful. Billie her voice- Eilish is really good, actually. And it's not like whatever the media has been feeding you about Billie Eilish is not actually her vocal range. Her vocal, yeah, her vocal range is insane. I think we're used to like Bad Guy. Like that's what we think of when we think I mean, of I like Bad Guy. Oh, I love Bad Guy. It's a good song. It's a great song, but that's not actually like her her full range and her range is stunning like yeah. where, why are you hold, don't hold back billy well i think she's just different she's, things yeah but she likes also i think i'm gonna give halsey a chance i like some halsey songs well i found out that she was like in a toxic relationship with who uh, it's just some guy and she was living couch to couch and every now and then she'd cash with her grandmother and then she wrote a song with a soundcloud performer and then they uploaded the song and then it went viral and that's how she got her start Work. And I was like, wow. I feel for her. And her she's... new album is called Ashley, written by Ashley for Halsey. And Ashley's her real name. And Halsey is a play on her name. Uh, so she, I don't know. Like, it made me really intrigued to listen to it. So I'm going to, I'm into new music this year. I, I mean, I've never, I don't dislike Halsey. Like, I really love Closer. I just Closer. don't know enough about her. I like that song Closer. I like that song she did with um, g Easy. Um, oh, that, I love that song. That's a great song. Oh I like, God. I love the song she did with BTS. I don't know. A boy with song. love, a boy with love. Song. It's really good. Like her voice is beautiful. Like I don't have any issue with Halsey. She did like two songs with the the Chainsmokers. I think closer than another one. Yeah, and I like the Chainsmokers a lot. I do too. Um, I think she's very good. Like I have nothing against her. I just and don't I'm open give to myself to time to discover new music because I get in the car and I'm in my mood and I pull up what I know and what I like and what I want to hear and that's 
we're, we're moving away from that kind of Jessica this year. I feel a little bad for her, too, because she's also part black. And nobody knows. And everybody whitewashes her. And, like, one time she posted her natural hair and people dragged her for her. Yeah. For it. And I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? Like, she's part well, black. Let some her be. People, some people dragged her, but a lot of people really were like, wow, you I should wear your... Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. And also, you look stunning. Wear your hair like that more. Absolutely. Yeah, because people do whitewash her. It's the same with the girl from Pretty Little Liars. They whitewash the fuck out of her, and she's not at all. She's, what is her name? Troy and Belisario? She's half, I'll show you a picture. She's half black, too, and people whitewash the fuck out of her, and she's actually, like, really political, really intelligent. It's crazy. Troy and Belisario. Here. She's half black. Oh, wow. And people whitewash the fuck out of her. Dang. And she's, like, really political and an activist and, like, doesn't fuck with people and pretty little liars who don't do that. Work. Like, she's real... I respect the shit out of her. But moving on to Demi. Oh, Demi. So Demi's performance made me cry. Demi. And I'm not a big Demi Lovato fan. I am. Hardcore. She may have made me one out of this. Because this performance was so raw and so honest and so beautiful. I cried in the car listening to it. And my son was like, well, then play it again. <laughs> and I was like, I hear you, bro. Um, the performance or just the song? The song... Well, I watched the performance first and I thought... Listen, guys, I'm, I am an emotional person, but I'm not a crier. It takes a lot to get me to, like, break down and sob. Um, and usually it's multiple things and not just one thing. Mm-hmm. I am very stoic. I don't like to show emotions. I have learned to show love and affection more. Um, but I'm just not a lovey-dovey person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I watched the Grammy performance first because actually what happened was is I thought, let me log into Hulu and see if I can catch Demi's performance. Because, like, if I logged in and they were going to say, you know, these were the next artists, then I was like, oh, I'll hang in and watch for that. Like, I yeah. want to see it live. And actually, I tuned into Lizzo winning. Like, when I clicked on, Lizzo was currently winning. And I was like, I'm so glad I clicked in. And then the artist that they mentioned didn't mention Demi. And I thought, well, I missed it. Let me click out. Saw my girl Lizzo. Missed my girl Demi. Whatever. Um, the next day, I watched it outside by myself and I cried and I thought it must be because I saw her cry it must be because it was a live performance live performances get me I also didn't know her voice her her voice was that strong yeah like good fuck that gave me chills yeah. like she's literally sobbing on the stage and still belting and belting and I was just like yeah listen here's the thing about me I love women artists mm-hmm. probably more than men but if you're going to be in my playlist, you're going to have a strong fucking voice because there is nothing else that bothers me more than a weak ass voice. Mm-hmm. Why are you performing? But like this performance was so emotional. Like she cried. She had to start over. And yeah, I think that added to I it. Like honestly, I'm right now thinking about like that. that honestly added to it because she starts and they start and the piano. The guy who was playing the piano was so good. Yeah, like, he was so good and he was so patient he with was her. So, he tuned into every cue she gave. He noticed him. what was happening and he stopped. Yeah, and I was like, oh, yeah. And so like she starts and then her voice breaks when she gets after like the first line. She her voice breaks and so she turns her head and looks at him and stops. And so he stops and everybody starts cheering her on and it's re- it was a really beautiful moment. You just cry. Oh my god, you're gonna make me cry. Stop. I, um, because I listened to the song outside of the Grammys performance. I was like, great. I'm going to listen to it on Spotify. And then, like, I had the same emotional reaction. And then, like, a day later, I was like, I cannot cry every time I hear this song. And then, like, I cried again. I listened to it, like, eight times. And, like, talking about it now makes me want to cry. It's, it's just, so beautiful. Uh, and it's and so it's, sad and heartbreaking. It's And it's not, like, a drug thing. And I know that this came out of, like, her drug and alcohol uh-huh. relapse. But, like, if you are a person that feels, like, alone or nobody understands you or... You can't get the help you need from the people around you because people are, like this is the song for you. It is. I I didn't want to push Mario to listen to it. Oh yeah, no. Mario's way more sensitive. And I, I really to these kind of things, but like I knew that he needed to hear it to relate to it. Like yeah. I knew that he needed to. Well, like. I struggled with mental health like growing up, and yeah. nobody would listen to me or believe oh me that God, something was wrong right with again. me. And so, like, that brought me back to that. And I think that's what really got me. Because I so I can relate to that. It really is. It's just, like, you're not alone and what have you. But oh also, it was God. just so beautiful. Like, she's literally crying on stage just saying, anyone help me. And like, she help wrote me. and sang the song and recorded it four days before her relapse. Yeah. 
Before, no, no, no. Four days before her overdose. So she Sorry, had already overdose. relapsed. You're right. I'm and this was a cry. Or this was her cry for help. And there was another song that she came out with that was like, it's called Sober. which She was singing on tour in the midst of relapsing. And it was about like relapsing and no mm-hmm. one did anything. Yeah. And then she has like, terrible people surrounding her. That's what I've heard. But that's why she fired. She kept her assistant, but she fired Philly Mac, who was her manager. She, um... It's not really associated with the Jonas Brothers anymore. And she was very, very close to them for a long time, especially Nick. Like, she literally came back. And it was this big thing in the media that uh, she came back to social media after she finished, like, her rehab. And she immediately, like, cut people out. And she was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Because Are the Jonas Brothers really into drugs? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Joe Jonas tried to blame it on Miley Cyrus. And Miley Cyrus is like, listen, motherfucker, if you want to smoke a joint, you're going to smoke a joint. No one's going to make you do it. (laughs) Because Miley Cyrus is queen. (laughs) I love that bitch so much. I'm still tearing up. She's officially divorced. Yeah, good for her. I don't feel like that was a good relationship. But that performance was so beautiful. It was my favorite. And I love Lizzo. And I love the Alicia Keys. Lizzo was so good. Everybody was so good. But no, that one was my favorite. Like, it it touched me. And then, like, seeing people in the crowd reacting to it was beautiful. I and can't wait to see all the fans. The support um, she got was just really, you it was know a great fans, moment. like, redo songs? Oh, the covers? Yeah, I, I can't wait Ooh, to see that. I'm not going to. That's There's a sad. part in her documentary that she did um, where she covered um, Stone Cold, which is one of my favorite songs mm-hmm. by her. And, like, fans covering it. And I, I was like, you guys are amazing. Like, why? I can't sing for shit. I wish yeah. that I could. I pretend that I can. I feel like this is going to be your praying like praying by Kesha will make me cry every time. I'm I can't wait. I the day that I watched the video, I went to work and I skyped my sister in law and I was like, "Real talk, letting you know an album is coming out. Be prepared to go to a concert." Yeah, I oh, was okay. like, "You need to be ready to go to a concert." Like we're going. Thank you. And that was the end of it because is she Demi Lovato fan? No, but she goes with me because I am. Like, mm-hmm. we went to a concert for my birthday maybe, like, three years ago. And it was a big deal for me. Because I've never really been to concerts. I don't like crowds. I've been to three concerts my whole life. Oh. Pitbull. Yeah. Pitbull. Crowds are hard for me. Crowds are really difficult. I'm laughing at Pitbull. not crowds being difficult. I'm Listen. sorry. My first concert was bad, too. I understand. No. I'm joking. I'm Fuck totally you. joking. I'm totally Pitbull joking. Pitbull and his bald, shiny head can get it any fucking day. You hear me? Any Where is he? fucking day. Living his best life, supporting all 15 of his children. He has 15 children. He has seven children. He's opening schools for kids that are like him in mm-hmm. Miami in that area. And then he's just being Mr. Worldwide. No, like work. Like, I, I have I'm nothing against it. I don't so think his music's very people. good. Mm. But... No, no, no. Uh-uh. I, I will argue with you on that. I'm going to tell you why I'll argue with you on that. He very much figured out that his collab music is what made him money. And yeah. that that money helped him do the things that he wanted to do in life. However, if you go and download El Marian, which is like his album, it's just him. Uh-huh. Is it a Spanish language album? Uh, yes, it's Spanish English, but it's super... And you know, that could also be why I've only heard his English music. It's, but he, and it's all collab. He, no, no, no. He, right. And he does bilingual uh-huh. on El Marian, but it's super fucking political. Like, he has a couple bops, but mm-hmm. it's really political. There's some spoken word on it that he brought. Like, it's really, really good. I want him to come out with an... I went through three CDs of El Marian because I listen to them so much. Wow. I love that album. It's still one of my favorite albums. And he's got some cute club hits in there, too. But his deep cuts... Don't come at me, bruh. She's so passionate, hell, yeah. No, I love Pitbull. She's I glowing right now. She went from I crying to glowing. I that like man. That. Listen, seeing him, like, that far away from me, I to everything I could not to flash him. Like, my nephews <laughs> were there. I was ready to blow the titty. I did not care. It was... I needed him to see my boobs. Work. I love him. And then my second concert was Demi Lovato. Uh-huh. And then my third concert was a bucket list concert. It was Mark Anthony. Oh. And I got to see with my, my husband's whole family. And it was like one of the best nights ever. That's cool. But I don't do crowds. So. See, I'm really tempted to go to Music Midtown this year because My Chemical, my Chemical Romance is, is the headlining band. But it's super fucking expensive right it's now. It's 125 that's super Jones, is cheap. That for two, is that for two, two days? It's for two days. And it's like 50 concerts. Stop it. Tickets yeah. are that cheap? Yes. Oh, I'll take they haven't. They haven't announced the... Headliners? They've only announced My Chemical Romance. And right now it's pre-sale. So if you buy it now, it's only 125 But I and need it goes to know up who else is closer. there. Yeah, but Same. I need to know who else is there. Like Taylor bought, already bought her tickets. Well... Yeah. Um, but she goes every year. And I was like, she's trying to convince me to go. I was like, I'm very tempted to go, honestly, because... So they've only announced My Chemical Romance? Yes, and I mm-hmm. love My Chemical Romance. What, like, what the weekend Black is Parade. this? Huh? What weekend is this? September 10th and 11th. Oh, line up. Hold on. Let's see what's on here. 
Have they announced more people? I feel I'm looking. No. Oh, yeah, here we go. Travis Scott. Oh, I'd go for Travis Indifferent. Scott. Indifferent. Oh, no, this is 2019. Yeah, it's last year. Yeah. I feel like Lizzo will be there. She was there last year. I feel like and so is Janelle. I feel like she'll be there, but I feel like Janelle goes every year. No, she doesn't. But if Janelle's Daniel, there this year, Daniel I Daniel has seen her at Music Midtown. Yeah, but she doesn't go every single year. But he didn't go last year. I don't know. Anyway, I would. Maybe. I would go see. I'll consider it. I would same same. I'm very much like I love My Chemical Romance. I want to see them so bad. I always wanted to see them in high school, and then like I do like My Chemical Romance. And then, like more, like if if Lizzo and and I'm Janelle dying. are there, I'm, I'm sold. To see Lizzo. I've been looking That's... for concerts near us that you and I can go fly and see. Oh my god! Yeah, I want to go to concerts because I've been looking at them. Pussycat Dolls is going on tour, mm. um, and so is. I look. I listen now to buttons, and I'm like, oh. I'm so heartbroken. Why? What's wrong? The Reed is going on tour. They're going to be in Atlanta on April the 11th, and mm-hmm. that's the day that Christopher's getting married. I'm so sorry. I know you should go though. But I can't. Not without me. That well. Oh. A yes. B that's my sister in law's birthday. God damn. April like, 11th is a birthday. Why did you have to do this, three? But we can go somewhere else. We don't have to go to just Atlanta. They're oh no, like the nearest, the next closest thing is like Miami. Like, it's not in the Ray, area. I love Miami. <laughs> Pitbull lives there. It's expensive as hell to go to Miami. Uh, we have family there. Do you? Yeah, that's where I went for my birthday last year. We oh stayed with Daniel's cousins. We'll look into it. <laughs> we'll look into it. I, I wanna, love Miami. I think it's Miami. We have to check. Let me check the Listen, coordinates. I'll grab Damaris. Because, oh, by the way, my sister-in-law listens to the radio. I'm now. so excited. Yeah. I'm so, I love that she loves it. I do, You too. need to get Roxy listening to it. I did. Oh, she needed to. I don't know if she listens like I listen, but I, so my, the thing is, is like there's um, a read where they talk about CBS locking up their shit and employees giving them hard shit. <laughs> um that one, I make everybody listen to that because it's so funny. And then what's the one? You don't clean. You, the, don't, do you don't clean. You don't do chores episode. That letter reading was my favorite so far. Like, I can't get over it. So I make everyone listen to that. And from that, Damaris and my sister-in-law listen to it. Daniel's not listening to it, but he listened to it. And he had a good chuckle out of it, which if you don't know, my husband, Daniel, that's high price. So. Wow. Yeah, he chuckled. He was like, that's really funny. I love them. I love them so much. They're really, so really good. Mu- I was like, heartbroken when Crystal was like, I didn't even know Demi Lovato overdosed. And I was like, where have you been, girl? Well, you know, they're all black. They're like, they're very much immersed in, cl- in black culture and nothing else. Yeah. And that's okay. That's their brand and that's what they do. And not enough people are doing that for their own people. I'm not criticizing. But this has now gone on for 52 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, we're not even done with... <laughs> we're not even done. Let's keep going. But also, we only have a single True. weekly topic. So going. it's fine. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to look up re- the read right now. Um, we can do that after the okay, podcast, okay, okay, babe. Okay, okay. I'm serious. Do you, if I'm you want to go to Miami, I'll go. Damaris will be down. Oh, yeah. When are they well, going to be not, in Miami? I have to make sure. I'm pretty sure it's Miami. We'll check. Okay. We'll check. But anyway, uh, let's I'll see. Go. The coronavirus is happening. Oh, More people are getting infected. My God, I went down such a deep, dark hole last night. Like, we were laying in bed because <laughs> my son got very very sick last mm-hmm. week um my son does not get fevers not super high ones he's had the flu before and they've never been really high he will and he's a fair baby my baby's pale um he will does that determine no it's a preface to what i'm about to oh say. okay so it's my, my son is a pale kid and his ears turn red and his cheeks turn red when he's hot but he woke up red from ear to ear so like oh. all this across his cheek across his nose was like scared like christmas red and i was like and I usually don't call to work. Like, I kind of make Daniel do it because he can work from home. But I was like, I'm staying home. And we went immediately to the doctor. And it wasn't flu. It wasn't strep. And my husband is really funny because medical stuff scares him. Not a lot scares him, but medical does. Understandable. I mean, he's, he reads about it all, sure. Well, yeah. But also, like, everybody has their thing that they, like, freak out about irrationally. Mm-hmm. For him, medical stuff is one of them. I've had to talk him down several edges. Um, so we went to (laughs) stop it. So we went to the doctor and my wonderful, wonderful doctor. I love her so much said, it's not the flu. It's not the strep. And she tested again because you can get false positives. And she said, listen, there's a really bad virus going around. It's very much like the flu, but it's not the flu. There's nothing we can give him. This is what you need to do. And so I texted that to my husband and he said, is it the coronavirus? And I went, this motherfucker right here. What we, if it is? I was like, we didn't go to China. I don't think there's any Asian people in his class. I know his teachers didn't go to China. Like, he only talks to us, his family, and school. That's yeah. it, you know? And so by Sunday, when his fever still wasn't breaking, I was like, is it the coronavirus? <laughs> 
Danny never stays sick long, and I don't know if it's an autism thing. I've seen my nephew get the flu and like beat it within forty eight hours. Like I don't know, but Danny's well, sure just also, not a sickly kid. I think that could potentially be it because I feel like well, socially it, people key themselves to appear sick when they're feeling bad. Whereas if they don't know that to do that social cue. No, it's not that. You don't think it's that? Danny has fought through the flu and is still built like Lego mountains. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My kid came home from the doctor's office with medication in his system and laid on one side of the couch, did not roll over through three Toy Story movies. Wow. Did it, that's not my kid has ADHD. It was it's scary. It was really scary. I didn't know what to do. I'm scared because my best he kept friend asking me when am I going to feel better, and I was like, maybe I don't know. Soon, if I could give you breast milk, I would. But we're not in that stage anymore. <laughs> like it's it was really scary to see my son like that. My daughter, I expected. I expect a high fever. I expected everything, uh-huh. but not with Danny. But also, autism is an auto immune sensory disorder and a lot of it has to do with like serotonin and and your belly and that's where your immune system is and so i feel like kids with autism can like kind of beat i don't know from my limited experience from what i've seen in my family the strain that daniel i have dealt with they don't stay sick long Mm -hmm. not that they don't get sick but it's never really serious this was serious and it scared the shit out of me i've never seen him like this i'm glad he's better He's still coughing. Mm. Yeah. No shortness of breath, though, so it's not the coronavirus. Where's the hand sanitizer? No. <laughs> He's not here. No, but I, uh, I'm i scared because my, my best friend, Dennis, um, he's the German one. Is he going to China? No, but he lives in a very small town in Germany, but it was reported that somebody with that with the coronavirus is in his town. Oh, my God. And he got the the swine flu, and it fucked him up. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, so now he has, like, a, a compromise, like, they're not compromised it's like a, a just a damaged circulation a, system oh yeah yeah. so yeah. he has um so he can't work because of it and so it's like you're already weak yeah and this is in your town you don't need to leave your fucking house absolutely not because his, his mom mates there no <laughs> oh shit um, but like, his mom he lives with his family because he can't afford to work oh yeah and so she but she always forces me to go to the grocery store with her every day it's mm-hmm. like you need to stay home mm-hmm. until this thing is passed 100%. because it can kill him so i did read a lot about last night like i was very interested to know about it um, this is not the first coronavirus that has existed. There's a SARS, SARS and then a, a Mars and yeah. a Mars, which is the Middle Eastern upper respiratory one. Um, and it's carried from what we know, it's carried by bat and carried by camels. And we don't, they don't think that a bat infected a human. They think something else intervened. And then there's a lot of technical science stuff going on. Basically the genetic sequence of a virus morphs so rapidly or evolves so rapidly that you can't always get the original strain but they believe they have the closest to the original strain which means they caught it early Mm -hmm. but now it's like containing things and then what i the most heartbreaking thing i read was that people figured they were going to shut down travel from huang which is where it started um that a lot of those people left before the travel ban because of chinese new year so all those people that could have been infected and contained within that region have not they left before the travel ban so um, yeah and then the first death happened in the philippines there's been like a hundred and some deaths now, but right? they've all been in china no one in the u.s has died from it and then the first death outside of china happened which was the philippines oh, okay yeah so it's scary but then i did read an article putting in perspective that more people have died from, from the, the flu. flu more people will die from the flu and that the flu is more dangerous than the coronavirus because the coronavirus is still very much like contained. But also, uh, the coronavirus is really only a danger to the elderly and children, which is the same for the flu. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, it doesn't. They oh, what was the number I read last night? They are expecting nine thousand people have it already. Thirty-two thousand people will contract it out of the thirty million that live in that region. Shit. Yeah. That, that was the CDC's reporting. I'm really into diseases and virons and prions, guys. We should play like, that game, Pandemic. Oh, no. <laughs> it's too real for me. I feel like it'd be very up your alley. Oh, okay. Let's invent. Let's, let's. I really like it. I, the diseases are cool to me, like as nerdy as that sounds. We hope, we hope too many people don't die. And yeah, and a lot it, of people are feeling like them. refugees in their own city and not being able to oh my gosh they're quarantined they're yeah they're quarantined, quarantined people, and like, people can't zoo. even stay in hotels like it's really bad did you hear about that did that you hear about the bahamas ship? no oh yeah i heard about the cruise ship the italian cruise ship yeah well carnival too i don't know about carnival i know no italian, i read it last night there was like a, an italian cruise ship um and there's a chinese woman who had a fever and yeah. so they stopped everybody from leaving the boat for like a week yeah 
Carnival now will not allow you to board if you've traveled to China in the last 20 days. Shit. You can't even... They will credit you back, give you another one, but you can't get on the ship. They will not allow it. Smart. And then, well, yeah. And then there was because I mean, flight. when you're on a on a cruise ship, you're you're, you're a sardine. You're a cesspool. Yeah. Like, everybody's germs are there. I'm surprised people just don't get chlamydia on cruise ships. <laughs> like <laughs> breathing right. the air. just breathing the air, a viral version of chlamydia. But um, the Bahamas refused to let a plane touch down because there were Chinese officials on board, and so they had to direct over to Haiti, refuel. They wouldn't let anybody off the plane for like an hour, and then they had to go to Port of Prince and Porter Prince accepted them, but long enough to fuel and then go somewhere else. Shit. Like the, the Caribbean was like, listen, we're a third world country. We ain't got no money. Tour, tourism is our only way to support our people. You cannot bring that shit here because no one will come here. China has other places that you can go visit. It's just that one region. That's yeah. Big. yeah. So I was like, well, I mean, this is how it's sad. You shouldn't be treated like a refuge. But at the same time, like it is a, the World Health Organization stated that this was a global emergency. Emergency. Absolutely. And so either we quarantine the people that have it, help them get better, or we just let everybody in the world get infected. I, I'm sorry. Like, we can't do that. Absolutely not. And Haiti's been through so much, guys. They need a break. Yeah. <laughs> so give them a break. Anyway, what's our next topic? Um, so I just really wanted, quickly wanted to say this. Um, Animal Crossing is coming out. Uh, I've been talking about it forever. We well, they announced a new Switch that's like animal crossing themed so it has like a back plate that has like little animals on it and stuff do you have a switch yeah okay and then it has the dock it has like tom nook and his two nephews so this is like a big game it's a huge game okay i'm just like obvious. i'm so excited and then it has pastel joy cons so it's oh, like a pastel green and pastel blue pretty. i'm so tempted to trade mine in or buy it um, do you think that you would appreciate having the animal crossing version yeah, but then also I'm just like, I just want the dock, honestly. Like, the pastel Joy-Cons are cool. Yeah. I think I would really love it if it was a white Switch, but yeah. it's not white. It's well, black. So I don't what know. we talked about, though. You have a goal. Even I if do. You no, exactly. My goal, my goal is an iPad, so yeah. I'm not focusing on it. It's just yeah. really cute. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but then also, you put on here the, the Taylor Swift, in the words of Stephanie Harlow, documentary. Documentary. I did. I watched it. How was it? Um, I feel like... I understand her a little bit better now. Uh-huh. I feel like I will still find her slightly annoying. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I get it now. I get I still it. Don't. I didn't watch it though. Um, I, the political thing is really what I wanted. Because mm-hmm. she did, she did try and go against a, a Tennessee, a Tennessee representative, female yeah, representative. Yeah, more about the stuff where she felt like people hated her and she was living for applause and that was unhealthy. Like, I'm glad that you recognize that and that you're working on that. Um, and then she talks a little bit about her relationship. Not much. They she made it very clear that they they decided to keep it private, and that's what they were going to continue to do. I mean, all of her other relationships were, were public, so public. So, so I, I feel mean, like she's learning from her mistakes, and you need to learn. How nice for her. <laughs> um, but the the political thing um, that was really interesting to watch. She had to beg her her people and her dad to let her do it Uh um they very much were like bing crosby didn't get involved and then her mom was sitting next to her like bing crosby what are you talking about like she's a 30 year old woman who feels like she's not being active and feels like she's on the wrong side of history and then it ended with her saying you need to go ahead and forgive me for doing this because i'm gonna do it Mm -hmm. and i but also her dad's a conservative. Right. So I'm not surprised he was against No, this. me either. But she was crying when she was doing it because, like, you could tell that it was such a point of contention. And I felt really bad because it was like, also, why are you telling her what she can and can't She's a 30-year-old say? woman. And she still feel like she had to justify herself. So I feel like there's something else. Her dad's a big part of her career. I get it. He's I, on her team. Listen, I'm the first one to say I get it. But at the same time, it, it very much... It was sad. It was yeah. sad for me. And then also, she talked about the lawsuit where she countersued for $1 because mm-hmm. the guy was mad at her and, like, how that was traumatizing for her. And that's really what woke her up because... The man who grabbed her ass, right? Yeah, because she was like, I can't believe I had to go to court. There were seven witnesses and a picture, and I still had to countersue. And she said, and when I sat on the sand, I felt like I was being attacked and I was being victimized, and I totally related to that. 
And then she said, and I still had to go through it and still had to feel shameful. And people had to ask me, why didn't you just step further away? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I shouldn't have to. Right. And so that's, she said that was a catalyst for her to become more involved in the things she felt like her team was wrong at that point because they were the ones behind the scenes telling her that don't get involved. Nice girls don't get involved. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, no, we're not being a nice girl. Yeah. So that's, this is her version of not being a nice girl. It may not be what I would do because I'm so vocal. Uh I still don't really connect to her music, but I enjoyed like watching it and seeing her perspective. I'm all about other people's perspective. So Mm -hmm. I liked it. Mario, you don't need to watch it. Good. Yeah. It's not not that Uh, like a knife to the hot. <laughs> no, it's not your thing. No, because like I was. I, ever, I wanted something. I got what I wanted out of it. You, I feel like you're not gonna want anything out of it. Yeah. So what's the point? Yeah, yeah. And it's not even that. Like, like I, I right on for her. For yeah. like, it's a little bit late because Miss Think should have been it's political never about too fifteen. Late. Years. It's no, never I understand. Too late. I understand it's never too late, but at the same time, I feel like she had a responsibility. Well, and I think she saw that because there was something in the documentary that, like, after she made that announcement, they had like twenty one thousand eighteen year olds register to vote, mm-hmm. and then she, the woman still won in Tennessee, and that yeah. was heartbreaking for her. She couldn't believe it. She went on this whole rant about it. Totally respected the shit out of her rant, um, but. She was like, it's okay because they're going to be like 40,000 or like 40 million or whatever number she said. I'm not good at numbers. These people are going to turn 18 between now and the next election. And so we still need to keep talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what an, what an incredible perspective. It opens with her finding out that her album Reputation was not nominated for the Grammys. And it was really hard for her. And her immediate response was, that's okay. I need to make a better album. And I was like, oh, I relate so hard to you right now. I I have never related more to you than I do in this moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it was okay. Like it's a good watch, but I wouldn't expect anything. It's not like watching Beyonce's Beachella. Oh yeah. It's not like that. It's not. I, and I feel like sometimes I'm more drawn to people who really I feel are victimized, and I feel like I get drawn drawn to like the colored aspect of things, like. We're talking years of victimization and no way out. So when someone like Beyonce puts out her struggles, and I'm not even a Beyonce, like, super fan, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I like her shit, but, it, you know, it's nothing like watching Beachella. It's hard to be sympathetic for white people who have so much and privilege. And that makes me feel really bad, too, because everybody has a struggle. Everybody it's not is- that. It's not that I'm I'm discrediting their sadness yeah. or that she didn't go through something, but at the same time, look at all this privilege you have. Yeah, someone's always got it worse. Exactly. Yeah, I get. I totally get that. But then I feel like days where I wake up and I'm in my feelings and I have anxiety and stuff. The, that's the last thing I want someone to say to me. Mm-hmm. You're like someone always has it worse. Like get over. No, it. I don't want to hear that either. Like guys, if I could get over it, I wouldn't be having this issue. I know other people have it worse. I'm struggling, so it's it's hard. But I think the reality is, is that I just don't connect with Taylor Swift's music. So it's yeah. hard for me to become emotionally invested. Does that make sense? Well, then also just, yes. And it's not even just her music that makes me not. It's her personality and her constant victimization yeah, and I all think, this other thing. It's just like, uh, I think she has probably been victimized in her own way mm-hmm. and that she's realizing it now. But instead of doing the empowered thing, it's like, no, no, no. I'm going to make you understand that I've been victimized instead of just being like, let's just do better. Yeah. I, so for me, it was that. Listen, it was good. I'm not saying it wasn't good. I, I really don't want to cut down another woman, especially because she mm-hmm. has had her struggles. That feels inauthentic to me. I just don't connect with Taylor Swift in that way. And yeah. that's okay. That's Same. okay. She has plenty of adoring fans. Now, moving on. Okay. Uh, you have on here, um, Say Wolf Lock on here. Did you see the exhibit? I did. I went to the exhibit, but the tarot cards weren't there. Oh, they must have been run. They must have run out. Uh, they must have run out or they took it down. You know, our town is weird. Like, was there still, when you first go to walk in, were there still images on either side with places for tarot cards? I didn't see a place for tarot cards, but I did see images on the other side. So it made me feel like they took that part out of the Potentially. Because they could have have been taken out because they ran out as well. Um, I'd hope. That's why. Because everybody took them. I'm going to go with you on that. I'm hoping. It was really, really beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Those headdresses. I really, really liked it. And the concept is very cool. Maddie loved it. She ran around the whole thing. She just felt like she was in a whole other world. And I was like, there's my six-year-old. She gets it. It, uh, It's a bummer. Because, like, it's an an interactive exhibit. Not anymore. When you hold up the... There's, like, this part at the very back of it. um, And you hold up a tarot card. And it scans your tarot card. And it, like, changes. 
Uh, yeah, that was changing the whole time when we were there. Yeah. It, was, it was a constant moving. And that's how it piece. does when you don't scan it. When you scan uh, it, it goes right to the one that you're scanning. Yeah, and that, it, I was really excited for the tarot cards. I was looking and I didn't see them. That's a bummer. Yeah, totally bummed out. I'm glad, it. I'm glad you liked it. It was beautiful. I liked it. I don't know much about her, but I am interested in learning more. I really, really liked it. I follow her on it. Instagram. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, lastly, uh, we just wanted to touch on Kobe Bryant's passing. Yes, we're giving that its own moment. Um, he died with his family and um, some friends and the pilot. His um, daughter's teammates' families. Yes. Uh, in a helicopter accident. And it's really heartbreaking and sad. I mean, he was a, he was an icon in basketball. A lot of people loved him. Like, it's it was really sad, honestly, seeing all of these people come out. And, like, people who were his rivals, people who... Everybody. They were sobbing. Over his loss, and then apparently the N or the NFL. Oh my God, the NBA sports. girl. Exactly, sports. <laughs> and, um, the NBA like made them play, yeah. and the into everybody on both teams was just sobbing the entire yeah. time. Like it was just like, guys, I get money, but y'all could have. Yeah, I, and I made that comment to Daniel, who is a huge Kobe Bryant fan. He loves basketball, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Babe, they were never going to do that. Like that's just unrealistic to even think that." I disagree. Um, <laughs> I yeah, me too. But we're idealists, and he's very much a. Realist. Well, I mean, if if an icon of the sport, if Michael Jordan, if Shaq, but they if don't him, do it for anybody else that's passed. But has anybody ever been as big as Kobe? Or I don't know. But Daniel passed, yeah. Daniel did mention some other deaths where they because like, like I'm gay and I know who Kobe Bryant is. Like right, no, exactly <laughs> sports, and I know who Kobe Bryant exactly. is. Exactly. I don't even know who's playing today in the Super Bowl, and I know who Kobe Bryant is. I know there's the one of the the quarterbacks is really cute. Mm, don't even know what teams are playing. I know it's Kansas City and another team in the Kansas that's, City. Hey, go ahead, because that's more than I. The know. Kansas City quarterback. I'm in is, it for J Lo and Shakira. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to watch that. I'll oh, my God. Be- I'm still going to watch it. I'm a huge Jennifer Lopez fan. Like, well, like, I'm, I'll hardcore. watch it on, like, YouTube, I no. think. I don't, like... We already talked about it. I'm going over there to cook my stuff. He's going to watch the first half. I'm going to watch the halftime show, and then mm. we're coming home. It's just, it's just like the... Because uh... he was like, we can leave at halftime. I was like, I have to see Jennifer Lopez perform. And he was like, okay, we can leave after. <laughs> well, it's Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Yeah. And I'm kind of bummed because apparently they've been fighting. Yeah, because not J Lo originally was supposed to do this by herself, and then they added Shakira. Shakira, yeah. and I was like, but Shakira Ooh. also has like a super strong personality. It's not the first time I've heard that people can't get along with her. See, he's really cute. Oh, is that Kansas City? <coughs> I don't. Know. Oh no, it's not Kansas City. It's what is SF? San Francisco 49ers? I don't think they're in the Super Bowl. This is it's these two teams. I mean, I don't know. But see, he's cute. He sure, could get it. Yeah, he could. Um, His name is Jimmy you, G. Can I tell you about my Kobe asshole moment? Asshole moment. Oh, I had a total asshole moment. I'm kind of scared. Oh, you should be. Um, should. I felt terrible because I am an asshole and I don't mean to be. Oh, God. What'd you do? Well, I was on the phone with our friends that we went to. The movie with? Yeah, because we were trying to coordinate a plan. We wanted to see each other. And she said, hey, did you see that Kobe Bryant died? And I went, you know what? My husband never tells me anything. And I turned and I was like, babe, why didn't you tell me that Kobe Bryant died? And he looked at me and it was like I shot him. <gasps> It was the oh, no. worst thing I've ever done. And I went, hold on, honey. And I was talking to my friend. And I said, he apparently doesn't know. And he pulled out his phone and he started looking and he was like, no, I love Kobe Bryant. And then when he, conf- I was like, I like, I'm shaking now thinking about it. Oh, because my God. It was the wor- it's maybe the worst thing I've ever done. Like, just assume, like, I assume a lot of things. Oh, so Daniel is huge into sports. He played all sports growing up. He genuinely watches sports year round. We pay extra on our Hulu to get the international soccer team, like challenge games and stuff. Like he loves sports, all sports. There's not a sport he doesn't like. He's a super athletic, competitive individual. Mm-hmm. He cried when he confirmed it, and then he cried. When they were wa- we were watching the news about what happened, and then he cried during the tribute Friday night, and I was like, "My husband didn't cry, guys. Then do it." Shit. He, I've seen him cry three times. This too personal to share on the podcast. No, I mean like uh, his dog died, and he cried, uh, and then there were some health issues that we were going through, mm-hmm. and it made him. I think feel kind of his mortality a little bit that yep. obviously will make you cry. Absolutely. So like I've seen him cry. We've been together. How long have we been together? 13 years, 14 What's years. What's math? 
20 minus 11. No, 7. Minus 7? 13 yeah. years? Thir we've been together 13 years. I've seen him cry like three times. Wow. Did he cry when you got married? No. Why would he cry? He was happy. He's not a happy crier either. Uh, I'm a happy crier. Me too. But he's not. <laughs> he was like, I proposed like four years ago. Way to go, babe. <laughs> like, we did it. Yay. He was over it by the time we got married. <laughs> he's just not emotional. His sister isn't either. So I felt like a total asshole moment. And then when we were at dinner last night, he was like, you know, I kept trying to think about why I took it so hard. And he was like, but I've been with Kobe since I was a teenager. And he got into the NFL and he was like, how many arguments have you and I had about him versus LeBron? And, and I was like, oh, yeah, I was an asshole last Sunday. <laughs> And then also, like, my friend, my best friend Jasmine, the one Not in California, funny. she grew up in Southern California. Oh, my God. So it's real for her. Oh, she's been crying. Like, her family's been crying. Yeah, there have been like, people outside the stadium. Also, her her brother-in-law pretty much became a millionaire um, because he sells sports memorabilia. Mm -hmm. And he did, like, $2.8 million in sales on Kobe Bryant merchandise. Mm -hmm. See, we got to touch on that. If we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Fuck TMZ. Oh, my God. Fuck, fuck TMZ. Fuck TMZ. Fuck them to the deep depths of the bad place because they did this with Michael Jackson. Did they? Yeah. They were the... Jermaine had to go and, like, find out because he saw it and was like, wait a minute, couldn't get in touch with Michael, and that's how he found out. That's disgusting. TMZ, because TMZ clearly has an in with the police. So, fuck the... Fuck the police officer or whomever is getting money for breaking this A news. First to responder, whoever whatever, it was. whoever it is that's their end, like have some fucking integrity. Because I told, I sat down and I watched the tribute with Daniel because it meant so much to him. Like I don't know that I his wife watch. found out he died through the internet. And I told him, I said, I don't know what I would do if I found out I lost you and one of our children through anyone other than a police officer. Yeah, and like even that fucking sucks. Yeah. But what at least you can more privately. Oh my god, it's so violating. And then it's also disgusting. Like him and his wife have been together since they were like seven. Yeah, they've been together forever. Like yeah, he cheated on her. That happened. I mean, but they've know, been together it doesn't for more than half, more than two thirds of their lives. They have like a 40. fucking history. Well, half their life, more than half their life. But still, like four beautiful children. Well, three now, but four beautiful children. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It's um so fuck TMZ. And then also It's not your place. But then I think about Princess Di. Like yeah. I remember when she died. I did was not really aware of Princess Diana until my mom was like, Princess Diana died. Mm -hmm. And we were in Destin on the beach. I remember. And then my mom was like, Yeah, she died. And then that's when after that's when we found out that it was the paparazzi that did that shit. Yeah. And then I told Daniel, I watched a documentary because of that moment always being ingrained in my brain. Mm -hmm. I you know, I was always fascinated by the death of Princess Diana. And, like, just who she was to royalty. And that I remember seeing some journalists saying, we decided as a unit not to let the boys grow in peace and not attack them. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, so now that they're adults, it's fair. Yeah. Because that's why I brought Meghan Markle on there. Yeah. Because I was like, this bitch had to make her, not make her husband, I'm sure he did willingly, but they had to remove themselves from royalty because people are just fucking assholes and won't let them live. Like, sure, get a cute picture, but, like, don't what the hell? Like, leave it. It's, it's disgusting. I, some of the hell, like, I remember one time she closed a car door and it was headline news and the yeah. fucking became was like, are you kidding me? Because you're not supposed to close your own car Who door. Who the fuck cares? And she's a feminist. She's a human. She's a feminist and she, I'm sure she felt like an object and she can't work and she can't support herself. I did read, though, that they have to pay back all of the money for remodeling Frogmore Cottage. Yeah. And they were like, great, here you go. Because they have a net worth of $30 million. Already? Well, I think in, in general. Like, period, between the two of them. They How? Been, well, she's been working forever. But all of his money. No, but he has money from himself himself as well. It's not part of the fund. No, but all of his money comes from the state. They pay him. But he gets a certain amount of money anyway just for him, the inheritance. So it's like, oh. yeah. So he has money and she has money combined. They have $30 million. They We have to pay back okay, three, Yeah. They're like, we'll pay back $3 million. And then I found out that her first deal is with Disney. But that that they're not getting money for that. Yes, exactly. She's all she's donating her money from it to, to Elephants Without Borders, which mm -hmm. broke my heart because I love, love elephants. elephants. 
So, yeah, like, fuck the media. Like, you do have the right to free speech, but I feel like there should be a law in place, like... And free press. And free press. You, there should be a law in place. You what, should have some fucking human decency. What's the, what's the line that judge said that was like, I can't define porn, but I know porn when I see it? Mm-hmm. It should be like that. Because I feel like breaking somebody's death or harassing someone to the point where they're having a breakdown... I, I, it should be a crime. It, sh- it should be a crime, and you should be shut down. Yeah. And then Daniel's like, I heard that the police went in and, like, scolded them. I was like, but... They did. They did, but also it's their people that are doing it. Someone in that area, your first responders and your police officers and your firefighters, people who are supposed to or protect paramedic. us, or paramedic, are going in and spreading this information. I just feel so I'm sure so it was badly. one person who wanted their payday. Yes. And... Made money off of this. Yes. I'm sure. Sh- and I certain. get everybody has a number, but I feel like the death is not a good thing. That's just bad juju. Yeah. But that's all we have so far regarding, or today with for icebreakers. Rest a lot of Kobe Bryant and Gianna and all of their fam- friends who passed in this helicopter accident. And I do like that everyone is bringing them up too. Absolutely. Because at first everybody's Kobe. focusing it and people are like, no. No. Other people died too. Yeah. And their lives were just as valuable. Did you see LeBron's speech? No, I didn't. I oh don't my know God. if I want to. Uh it was it was empowering. Because they were like super rivals, right? Uh yes, but they respected the shit out of each other. From what Daniel told me, I don't no, know. No, because I'm pretty sure LeBron James, when he first found out, he was sobbing on news talking to somebody about well, it. Well, here's the thing is that like he walked out and he had like a piece of paper folded up in his jersey because he had to play a game immediately after and he was like you know the officials told me what i needed to say and how to stay on track and he threw the paper down and he said but i would not be doing my man justice if i read that fucking bullshit that they want me to and like they had to bleep out his curse words like i'm not that's what happened and then he like went in and he just was basically like his code thing or his like thing was black mamba so he like ended it with black mamba but he was like we're gonna play we they were good people we're gonna play that's what they would want us to do and yes, this is devastating, but he used to say Black Mamba out and he said Black Mamba in or something like that. Mm. So it was really, it was good. It was not, I didn't cry during that part. I cried during Boys to Men. <laughs> I think music is what's making me cry and I can't cut it out of my life well, because maybe it's this so is a fulfilling. Good thing. But uh, we'll be right back. This week, we only have one topic, and that topic, and that's why icebreakers went a lot longer than normal. But they were um, good icebreakers. They really were. Um, but we are talking about season two of The Good Place, yes. because The Good Place finale just aired. And I watched it, and I cried, guys. It's so good. I know. I need to talk to you about it off tape. Um, okay. Because I've heard some things, and I just need some reassurances. Okay. Uh, but we'll be right back after this brief musical interlude. You just feel? <laughs> I just filled um, Mario in what happens in the season finale of uh, season four of... Or the series finale. The series finale of The Good Place, and I cried so hard. Oh, she just broke down. <laughs> like, I'm so ready. I need this cry. And I, like, compared to Mario, like, I'm not an emotional person. So I'm going to be a fucking wreck tomorrow. Get I, ready. like, I was like, fuck. I, I think I texted you, fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> because I was right at Chidi's monologue, and I was like, oh... This show has turned out to mean so much for me. Like, I just remember clicking on it and going, I love Kristen Bell. Let's do this. Yeah. And it's turned into be like this whole big, beautiful life lesson for me. It's a really good show. Oh, it's my God. It's a really good show. But, but listen, if you are an emotional person, be like Mario. Read some spoilers because that's what he... I just spoiled the whole thing for him. Mm-hmm. He likes spoilers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's given me something to look forward to. It's just, it's so good. And like, I, I got cry- you, I started crying. But now, like, if you don't cry, I'm going to be like, something's really wrong Oh, no, I'm going to sob. I know I'm going to sob. Because, like, just... It's it's the whole... I was crying reading about people's reactions on Tumblr. Yes. Today, and I was like, oh, my God, for, I need to stop reading this. I, I, for me, the Eleanor Cheaty thing, like, I have such a strong connection to their relationship. Mm-hmm. And so for them to have to separate the way that they end up separating and, like, how... Spoilers, Chidi, goddamn. Sorry. But, I mean, like, okay, sorry. But then, like, the way that Cheaty's so kind to her in the process about it is just... Mm-hmm everything that you would want in a partner and it's just beautiful i don't really cry again oh no it's just really good Sorry. so no worries this this week we're talking about season two and i um i think we're going to be a little looser about it because i feel like last week we were yeah. a little too rigid about our conversation sure uh, but season two really introduced a lot of new concepts to the show it uh it kind of 
set them on the course of where what the point of the show is because the first season is a standalone season honestly yeah it, i mean it, it establishes the characters and everything but honestly really the point of the show starts in season two and you needed that first season to really understand the the setting what's going on and what the issue is and then going from there so with this season, uh, well, the end of last season, we ended with Eleanor figuring out that they're in the bad place. Yeah. And she scribbles down a note on a book from like, was it Kant or something? Uh, yes. And and she said, Eleanor, find Cheaty. She puts it in Janet's mouth. Oh my God. They get reset. Cry. <laughs> and so Janet gives her the note and um, they've, they're doing things differently this time. They have different soulmates. So it's already starting to torture them because... Uh, but Eleanor also knows off the break this time that something's up. Yeah. Because she recognizes her handwriting in the note from Janet. And she's like, find Cheaty. Okay, I need to find Cheaty. But what I like about the first episode is that the cons- the constant reboot. Yes. I loved that. I love it that too. It was my favorite. Um, it's it's such a cool idea yeah. how they're doing it. But the first, we only really get to see one reboot until the final reboot. Right. We see like snippets, but this reboot in particular, when they has, have different soulmates. He has a butt reboot. Oh, uh, that one was really funny. <laughs> I loved it. Sorry, I sat on the controller. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which if you have a big ass, this has happened. I wish I did. Oh my God, I've done that so many times. But uh, they, they restart with new soulmates. I love, I love Eleanor's new soulmate. Because anytime she tries to push him on anything, he's like, we can talk about that, but I got to go to the gym. He was in the gym like eight times in five nine, hours. Nine, nine times. times in one hour. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so he rips off his shirt and runs away. But like, it's, it's like a, it's like a magic might moment. Cause he just like rip, like he just will be in full like dinner wear. And then he like rips off his shit and goes to the gym. <laughs> it's so stupid. At like a fancy dinner party yeah. where his soulmate is being honored. He rips off his shirt to go to the gym the show is so fucking good and then and then tahani's um soulmate is a short guy oh my god yeah. and he wants to live in a small house and it's a and he and, she, and he wants her to wear cargo shirts and crocs and she does oh my and god. it is the most oh i feel for her my favorite part was that he when they showed him to their house and she was like oh this is because it's a very basic rustic house <laughs> And she's like, oh, okay, great. And he's like, you know what, Michael? This is unacceptable. She's like, thank God. I didn't want to say anything, but yes. thank you. And he's like, this is way too big for us. And they get rid of the second floor and her face is like, fuck. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you remember in season one, her house is like a castle. I've been re-watching because I just, I can't get enough now. And like when I love the scene in the first season where it's like Eleanor's tiny little blue house next to like this Kensington sized mansion. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's the most and that- normal thing on the planet. <laughs> oh my oh gosh. Oh my god, honey. Um Jason's soulmate is another monk who doesn't talk and follow him every follows him everywhere and it drives him crazy. But this is my favorite Jason episode. Is it? Yeah, because I like how he just like loses his shit. He does lose it on it. He's like, like my, whole, my my best friend is Pillboy. He can't hold a candle to Pillboy. Who like he just like loses his shit. Like this monk drove him to break character more than Tahani ever did. Yeah, and it was just the funny. I don't know. It's and not. then I felt for Chidi the most because he show up like actually there's a miscalculation so we don't know who your soulmate is it's one of these two women fucked with cheaty heart and you have to talk with them and determine who it is and like okay fine so you know cheaty doesn't make a decision he can't make a decision and he finally decides okay it's this girl and they're like okay actually we figured out and your soulmate's the other girl and he's like what okay and i felt so bad and it was so mean to cheaty (laughs) i just realized we joke all the time that my sister-in-law roxy is cheaty because, like, she says that her PhD is, like, driving her to be more and more indecisive and question everything. And I've seen it happen. And I'm like, girl, make a decision. Mm-hmm. But then we always joke that Damaris is Janet, which totally makes sense. But I think I'm Eleanor. I'm the trash bag from Arizona. Why? Because <laughs> it's the only person I fit with. I'm not Michael. No. I'm not Michael. I'm not Jason. But you could be Tahani. I am not Tahani. Well, it's not that you're so, but you're very cultured. Thank you for the highest compliment anyone's ever given me, but I much more relate to the trash bag from Arizona thing. But at the same time, I mean, you I look had at an Eleanor. asshole moment last week. But that was unintentional. It was, I feel like some of Eleanor's are like, she just doesn't know how to get through life. But, yes, but she also lets her upbringing 
be an excuse for why I, she's But I can choose. do that. But I have done that, and I can do But that. also, Eleanor is a very good person, and she becomes a better person. So right. don't put and yourself down. And she ends up fixing the universe. Exactly. So I feel like, I, okay, great, thank you. This You're is Eleanor. Little, this is the aligning conversation I need with Daniel this morning about the next steps in my career. I needed that. Okay, Work it. Go. Um, so... Uh, I love some of the names that she calls Janet because she can't remember her her name. Um, but, Eleanor. Busty probably, Alexa. Busty Alexa. <laughs> Excuse me, friend desk lady. <laughs> Busty Alexa. Busty Alexa. Um, um, so they go through this and they figure it out. And so they keep rebooting and they do 802 reboots. I think so, yeah. That sounds that sounds right. And so in the last... I've seen this show so many times. So finally... Jason, he like Michael's had it. He's like standing on a bridge, and Jason comes up walking to him and oh starts my talking. God, yes! And he completely breaks character, and he's like, "Look, you're not really John. You, you're Jason from Flat Florida. I need someone to talk to." Exactly. <laughs> and so, like, he tells him the stupid story about his dance crew, and he's like, "Oh my God, you're right." And so, it helps Michael realize I need to team up with the humans because by this point, the demons <laughs> are guys. are tired oh of God. these reboots because they keep having to change characters, and it's hard for them because they're all being actors. There's a coup, yeah. And so they are, there's a coup against him and fucking Denise or whatever. No, what's her name? Vicky. Vicky. Yeah. Vicky I'd is the leader of Vicky. it. Um, and so she's like the leader of it. It's like, these are our demands. And if you don't agree with them, we're going to tell your boss that she's we've done more. Moron. Because Michael was given a single chance and they fucked it up immediately. Yeah. So he's been rebooting, 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 rebooting. And they're on 802. And, and Vicky like took notes on everything and is now blackmailing him to give the thing over to, to her. And so he agrees to it but behind the scenes is actually um siding with the humans now i will say favorite part of this episode this episode is such a good episode are we in the first two episodes at this point? we're just we're just talking okay. story so, so i really like this part because mindy st Clair is my favorite i love how because she, she's like i'm glad to see you guys again she's like you've been here so many times it's your she's 15th like, time she's like saying all the things that they say and she wrote down all their plans for them to save time like she's just like whatever oh mindy mindy st Clair. she has one of my favorite lines though mindy st Clair touched my heart in the final episode oh she's in it yeah she's in it oh good girl, when i girl when i say they tied this up this is the best way i've ever seen this sh- a show end wow i'm so excited yeah, even the frog guy he has like a moment too yeah it's so fucking... I mean, they brought back Vicky. There's a whole heart-to-heart moment with... um, Who's the demon? Michael and... Adam Scott? No, not Adam Scott. Adam Scott was first season. He doesn't come back. Oh, I know. I love Adam Scott, too. The other guy. His boss. Oh, his boss. Yeah. They have, like, a moment, too, where he, like, plays him a little bit. And then they have... Him. It's... it's. I'm like so it, ready. I'm so ready. It's a fucking bow is what it is. It's the perfect bow on top of your Christmas tree. It's so fucking good. And so, like, one of Mindy's lines, though, makes me laugh when she's talking about why they left. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, one time you walked in on me masturbating. And one time I walked in on you while I was masturbating. <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? She's been recording Eleanor and Cheeky having sex. And, oh, it's just it's Mindy St. Clair, man. She really she's is a bright spirit spot. animal. Yeah, she's my spirit animal. And so, anyway, they're, he's trying to convince them to side with her. Mm-hmm. Or side with them. Because, Michael, at this point, they're like, okay, you're about to be rebooted in 30 minutes. Yeah. We need to work together. I'm not going to reboot you. Yeah. Um, you just have to pretend that you were rebooted. Yeah. And this is what we're all going through this. Yeah. And they are undecided. And so, he has to convince each one of them. And yeah. so, he gives Jason a sparkler and he's immediately convinced. Absolutely. Um, but then he, with Tahani, he tells Tahani how, he di- how she dies. Oh, man. And it's really sad because oh, she hurts. confronts her sister and then her, she she tries to pull down the statue yeah. of her sister because her sister's just a complete asshole to her. Yeah. And she gets smashed by the statue and that's how she dies. Yeah. And her takeaway from the story is, oh no, I died in Cleveland? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the fact that she died and by then he's like, don't think that's what you're supposed to get from that. And <laughs> yes. then she's like, oh my God, I am a terrible person. Yeah. Oh. I do deserve to be here. Yeah. I want to. And then she says, I think we should all work together to make a better Tahani. And I was like, still not hitting it sis like he's still not getting it <laughs> and so i think eleanor was the last one to be like chidi's like it's our only option yeah because pretty much if if this this experiment goes south he says how long do you have to know someone before you do the right thing nine weeks minimum i, was like, <laughs> Bitch, I love you so much <laughs> oh eleanor yes so <laughs> I love Eleanor. She is a trash bag, but I, man, I love her. So, um, so Michael has, is trying to, they're trying to convince, what's her name? Eleanor. Eleanor. Oh my God. Sorry. They're trying to convince Eleanor that 
she needs to do it. Nobody's trusting her. Or nobody's trusting Michael. Because Michael's... Or uh, Chidi's like, it's really our only option because... Nobody it's, trusts him anyway, but they're going along with it because it's the only way they think they're going to actually get into the good place. Exactly. Because initially they're like, well, if this experiment gets shut down, you're just going to go to the bad place and you're not going to have a chance. Yeah. And then I'm going to get destroyed. But if we work together, That's there's a, a chance. Mary. Exactly. There's a chance. Yeah. We can get you to the good place and I can get to the good place too. Yeah. And so they're like, fine. So Eleanor finally agrees to do it. Yeah. They go about it. Because Eleanor was about to go back to fucking... So Mindy St. Clair. Mindy St. Clair. She's and, gonna go, you know, get raped. And so they start over from the beginning and her and Chidi are soulmates mm-hmm. and Tahani and Jason are soulmates and Tahani and Jason start fucking. Uh, well, actually, actually, actually. Yeah. No. They start pounding it out in pounding the words of Jason. And Janet. Oh my God. And I feel so bad because Janet's not a person. She's a, th- a thing, a being. I don't know what She's not it. a being. She's um an uh, all-knowing database. Sentience. Yeah. Yeah. So she starts. So they, they start seeing each other in secret, and then Jason's like, "Well, why do you keeping? Why are you keeping this secret?" And Tony's like, "You know, I don't know. Let's. I need a counselor." Yeah. And so no, Janet no, becomes that her, was Jason. Jason's like, "You need to talk to oh, somebody." Need to talk to somebody. That's yeah. It. And so Janet becomes her counselor, and Janet has a fucking mental breakdown. She does, and, and it's so good, you guys. Like her thought, she starts like, <clears throat> what is it, decorporealizing or whatever? She starts falling apart literally. Yeah. Uh, because she's still in love with Jason. Yeah. And so... Like, throwing up pennies, guys. Throwing up pennies, her thumb floats away. Yeah. Um, it's so She causes fanciful. earthquakes. Yeah. And so they're trying to figure out... So, like, she's helping them, talking to them, helping them with their relationship, and she's Doing like, what Janet is supposed to do while also having a mental emotions. breakdown. Because it turns out, every time a Janet's rebooted, she comes back with more ability to feel. Yeah. And so she's been rebooted. More abilities, eight, period, and feelings have become a part of Janet's reboot. And so she's been rebooted 800 times, 802 yeah. times. So that's why she's so emotional Derek. and everything. They agree to work with him. They go back to the way it was, yeah. um, where they're originally soulmates. They start, okay, no, Janet. Mm-hmm. So Janet's having this breakdown, and she comes to Michael, and she's like, the only solution to this is you have to marvelize me. Yeah. And Michael's like, no, I can't marvelize you. And she's like, you have to. Like, it's fine. It's totally good. Like, it's, yeah. it's totally okay. And, and all this time, though, we should say that Michael has been taking um, ethics, ethics classes. classes. So he's, like, doing the trolley problem, and he's... Which I love the trolley problem. Oh, my God. I was so fucked up. We should talk about that next. We will. Um, but that happened after this, I think. It did? I, I thought it happened before. So. I think it happened after. Pretty sure. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, Michael has been taking ethics lessons and being... No, it happened before his midlife crisis. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it happened before. We completely skipped that. It's okay. Mike, uh, we'll get to it. Anyway, uh, Janet... Um, it's like turn me into marble which is basically like killing her like real really killing her not pressing the button killing her like she does not exist anymore and so he's like i can't you're my friend yeah and that kind of helps her and they bring in eleanor and eleanor's like you just need to get a rebound yeah you know get over it quickly um because she just thinks it's a crush yeah and really rewinding really quickly during their ethics lessons, um, they go through the, the trolley. The trolley problem. And this comes back later. So they go through the trolley yeah. problem. And it's you're on a trolley. And you have five people on one track, one person on the other track. Where you do have you to divert? Choose yeah. Where do you divert? You have to kill five or one. And then there's like a different turn, like spins on it. Well, that one person is somebody you know. Yeah. Or that those or five. Or that you're one a surgeon and that, you know, that one person can save five people. It's by like, killing one person. Yeah, it's exactly. all these different ethical lessons of like what do you do in situations exactly and so he's learning but all this Michael, and he really, Michael's just having fun with it Michael literally puts them on a trolley <laughs> oh no and Cheedy can't make a decision to save his life so every time they go through the scenario he kills people and he kills his best friend and he kills his best friend with those fucking and there's boots. blood and human body parts everywhere and he's like can and he's like they're not real people they're not real people but they can feel pain and i was like michael <laughs> you're the worst person and then and then she calls him out then eleanor's like you're torturing him you need to stop yeah and then they realize it's not really clicking with him because he doesn't understand like he's an immortal being yeah you don't and know being what it means immortal to die. you don't know what it means to die so you don't understand why it matters to make your life have purpose yeah and so he pretty much explains to him what it means to die and michael completely shuts down and like is a ball like on a couch for like a good five minutes 
And then, and then um, he goes through a midlife crisis. Then he goes through a midlife crisis. And Janet is in like this hot pink She's dress. She's Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette. She's Jeanette at she, this point. And she has a blonde wig on. And um, she's making he has a all these car. horrible misogynistic statements like, women don't eat and eat you know, stuff like that. And he's like, oh, it's so great. And she just. <laughs> and Vicky, and Vicky's like, I don't know what's going on with you, man, but like, relax. Yeah. <laughs> she has no clue. So, anyway, back to. Janet having this. So Janet, it's like, okay, well, I need to get a rebound. So she goes into her void and comes back and she made a, a boyfriend. Man. She made a man. Um, and it's Derek. Derek. And he... He's a moron. He's a complete moron. And she has, only gave him a little bit of her knowledge. And he has a... Um, he doesn't have a dick. He has His a wind, wind chime. Chimes. So he's just weird. I don't Which know. Which I thought was really funny because she knows what a dick is because she tried to have sex with Jason. So Derek and her, like, she's really happy with Derek at first. And then, like, literally, like, minutes later, she's over him. Yeah. And she wants to dump him. Yeah. And they get into a fight. And so he keeps popping up everywhere. Yeah. It's like, it's going to give us away. They, they're going to realize, okay, something's up. We're fucking with things. And so, like, he, they're trying to convince him to he's stop. He's such a piece of shit, too, because he's like, I thought it was our void, but it's your void. And then he goes into a tree and they have to... Oh my god. And he's like shaking the tree he's and screaming. He's a hot fucking mess. He's a mess. And all he says is Derek. Derek. <laughs> it's great. It's so good. That actor's very good. I don't um, know his name, but he is. I good. see him in a lot of things. Me too. He's good. I'll look him up really quick. Uh, but. So we can say his name. So they try to resolve this situation um, and they realize why Janet's still not over. Still, like, all the problems are still happening. And they realize Janet's genuinely in love with Jason and not just liking him. Yeah. And, like, because Eleanor's like, oh, my God, I, I need to take back what I said because I thought you just had a little crush. And it wasn't a crush. It was love. And so, eventually, to get rid of Jason, they... Or she takes away all... She makes out with him to get rid of him so he's stupid again. I'm sorry. Jason Mansukas plays Derek. Okay. Yeah. And so, they finally resolve that. He's... They put him in a box and she puts him in his void. In her void. In her void. Mm-hmm. And then they get caught, right? Mm-mm. From there, like the next thing is, how do we get there? They don't get caught. Um, Michael's boss, Sean, that's his name, Sean, shows up because the good place is doing so, or the good bad place is doing so well that Michael's being promoted and they're going to use it and analyze it and make more bad places similar to this because it's just psychological torture is just as effective as the physical torture. Mm-hmm. And so then Michael has to play along and be like, um, ha 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 we tricked you and then they're all kind of like acting and they think terribly by the way well they think he betrayed them yes at at first first. they did yes and so like they're they're dragging this out like y'all are about to go to the real bad place Mm -hmm. not this experiment's over Mm -hmm. and um they do like this whole roast of them and in the roast he keeps making these comments that that kind of makes sense but don't if you pay attention and we're out of character exactly yeah and so they do this Derek Bortles instead of Whatever his name Somebody is. Somebody else. Is that a real name? Yeah. It's the, ja- the, the, Jack- the Jacksonville Jaguars super, um, quarterback. I don't know. Okay, I'm looking Wrong up. gay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me too, then. <laughs> but. <laughs> Me too. I'm a gay man, too. Because if that's the barometer, I'm there. Jacksonville Bortles. Blake Bortles is his name. So, John you Jason is obsessed with Blake Bortles. He's obsessed with the Jacksonville, Jacksonville Jaguars. But he's obsessed with Blake Bortles. Yes. And so they... They're at this thing, and um, he's not even on the Jacksonville Jaguars anymore. And so the show goes. Well, yeah, I mean, the show that season came out years ago. What season? Season two. Oh. That was like f- three or four years ago. Okay, I didn't. People know that. get traded. I didn't know that. Um, anyway, well, I know people get traded. I didn't know that this show was that old. Oh yeah. Okay, they're on season four. That means at least four years. So at least three you're years right. Ago. You're right. You're right numbers don't do those either does that also mean i'm a gay man no okay you're just a jason idiot. you're from florida oh no i'm gonna go immediately to the bad place but now you can get out of it spoilers yeah. um <laughs> sorry i did it this time oh my god i'm so hungry okay come on i'm hungry you haven't eaten today me either oh my god i had twins coffee. uh anyway sorry 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 so so like they're at the like they're just destroying the good place after the after the roast and then it cuts and the train is taking away and like, oh my God, the humans escaped. Mm-hmm. And Bad Janet does a scan and can't see them anywhere. And they frame Vicky for it. And they do frame Vicky for it. And yeah. so they call another train because they think, oh, they're going to Mindy St. Clair. So we're going to try and extradite them from Mindy St. Clair. Yeah. So everybody from the bad place goes to the good place. Mindy St. Clair lives in the medium place. Right. Yeah. So they go to the medium place 
Um, and then as the train takes off, you see the four humans are underneath the train. Yeah. And so... And then for a brief moment, you still think that Michael is, is with, a bad guy. And then he starts crying because he was so worried about them. Yes. Yeah. And then they do a flashback of how they figured <clears throat> out he was giving them clues yeah. with the roast. And so they did what he said. They got Derek yeah. to run the train to Mindy St. Clair's and they sent him with a bag, like two giant bags of cocaine and him to be her sex thing. And Mindy was so happy. And he's like, she, he's like, I don't have a penis. I have a wind chime. She's like, I can make that work. Yeah. We all can, girl. I guess so, yeah. I mean, it, but if they're like that really thin, like You're, cold aluminum one, aluminum, think, aluminum. I, I say aluminum. I love it. It's very kind of I think it sounds so pretty. I said it, no, I said it by mistake because I was picking up beer for my parents from the drive thru. Yeah. Because in the South, we have drive thru liquor stores. I think they do everywhere. No, they don't. That's a Southern thing. Uh, I've been through drive through liquor stores in the north. Like how north though? DC. That's still considered Connecticut, south. New the, York. Well, that not, but like that's definitely. I think they're more prominent here, but you can find them in other places. It's not super common. Regardless, I accidentally said aluminum because my mom likes the uh, the aluminum beers. The, the but the bottles. Oh okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. so yeah, I yeah. said aluminum bottle. The Miller Lite aluminum bottles, fifteen count, please. County? And he's like. Uh, Adam Duritz, Durowitz, the lead singer of Counting Crows, says aluminum in his songs. He doesn't sing aluminum. It sounds so much better. It does. It's I beautiful. Agree. And speaking of, that happens in this Exactly. That's what, that, that was on my mind. Okay, we'll right do it. Aluminium. I like it. But, but anyway, so they show how he did it. And so they're like, okay, well, we need to leave this good place and we need to go see the judge. And the only way to get to the judge is to go through the real bad place get these pins to allow us to go through this portal. It is one of the best episodes. It's flashing through my brain right now and I love um, it so much. And then we have to sneak through. I love season two. It's a great season. I love season two. Um, I, I don't... Uh, I like all three seasons that season I've seen. Season three is my least favorite. Is I think it? it's season two, season... No. It's season four, season two, season one, season three. That's okay. my rating. Well, when I'm done, I'll, I'll do a rating. Oh my God. But anyway... Uh, they they have to do that, and so they get to the bad place, and he puts them in the the museum of misery for like or of torture. He's like, just wait here, I'll be right back. Nobody comes here. But there's they're planning a party in the museum of torture because they're with their robots it. because they're adding them. So they have doppelganger robots in there while they're also in there. Well, yeah, but they don't have to interact with them. Luckily, that's no. like very so they're there having to pretend to be torturers while. Michael is trying to get them pins. And watching Chidi act like a frat boy was such a turn Oh my for me. god, it was so funny. I loved it so much. Give him books. <laughs> he said that he did a ball tap, and I was like, yes, Chidi, yes! Oh my god, I, I hate ball taps. <laughs> I don't, I've never experienced one, so I don't You're know. lucky. Oh, thank you. It hurts. <laughs> I used to do clam high fives with my friend Joanna at work, though. We would smash our vaginas together to do a high five. Because we were weird and funny like that. I never knew that was a thing. It's called the clam high five. I called it. Did y'all make it up? I maybe. I don't know. I don't want to take credit because I feel like I can't be the only one who's really close to another girl. It's like high five. Yeah. This is at school? Yeah. I mean, like no students were in the classroom. It'd be after a good day of work. Badge five. Yeah. (laughs) Of a five. Anyway. (laughs) A five. So Michael is like trying to play cool like oh yeah like this is how it was meant to be yeah and so they're going to like this situation room essentially and it has yeah. footage of they're about to raid mindy st Clair's yeah middle place to get them and extradite them back to the bad very place. much what i imagine it's like for trump to sit in a room and not know <laughs> what the fuck is going on and so they're there and they go in and the humans aren't there and they turn and Michael's gone too. Yeah. And so he ran with the badges. Well, he snatched the blazers because you need a special pin to get into the judge's chambers. Exactly. And so he needed more pins to help get everybody through at the same time. And then he snatched up like blazers and ran. So he runs um, and he finds the humans and they're still undercover. And they just presented the robots that look like them and are talking about their Oh, the really quick. Can I say this? Tahani no. as an American accent with her like sideways humor. What American? Oh, oh, because oh, she oh had yeah, because she, well, she pretends to be Rhonda. She pretends to be Rhonda from Hot Dog. Yes. And it's so good. Everybody's so talented on this show. Honestly. Like, honestly. really, really. Janet, Janet's the most talented. Yeah, but I think Sahani's up there, too. Sahani's like, really fucking good, Like, too. Jamila Jamil is such a good actress. And then from the Seth and Myers, activist. So the Seth Meyers thing, I learned that ex- with the exception of Ted Danson and um, Kristen Bell, everybody else, this was their first breakout role. Wow. Everybody. Good for them. Yeah. Well, not Adam Scott. Well, he wasn't up there. True. And he has a very minor role. Yeah. Well, you know, and Chidi, the actor who plays Chidi, is an illegal immigrant. Really? Yes. And when all this stuff was happening with Trump, he came out as an illegal immigrant. I will marry him. 
do it. Well, I'll, I will divorce sorry, Daniel, Daniel to marry him. But anyway, <laughs> so they he goes and gets them after they've been presented with these robots, and people are starting to realize, hey, that looks like this person that we just talked to. That looks like this person, mm-hmm. and so they are running. So they're running to the portal. And it turns out Michael did not have enough pins. He was short one. And so he pushes the first three through, and then it's him and Eleanor. And he's like, I finally solved the trolley question. And you don't make it, or you sacrifice yourself. Yeah. And so he takes off the pin, puts it on Eleanor, and, and pushes shoves her, through. her through. And then he gets caught. Yeah. And it cuts. And the, and you also think Janet's been marbleized by this Yes, point. yes, yes, yes. I remember. And so... Again, Darcy Carter, so oh. fucking talented. But then one of my faves in the next episode shows up because Maya Rudolph is the judge. Maya Rudolph. I love did Maya you, Rudolph Did you so have much. a moment when you realized she was the judge? <laughs> well, the I first time this, I saw it, I was the first so time I saw it, I was just like, oh, yeah. no. Like, way to bring the clout game, guys. Yes. The good clout. But because... also she's kind of God and seeing God's like a black woman. Yeah. It was also cool and all, but I, I and, But love she's not her. God, she's the judge. She's the judge. But yes, I mean, but, like, there's no the, God God. There's no one above her yes like her name is jen because oxygen was the only thing that in existence when she was created oh word she says that i don't remember yeah her name is oxygen but she goes by jen love it yeah i love so good she's incredible too so like they're they get there and they see a burrito and think is the burrito the judge very jason of all of them but then eleanor's like maybe he's right yeah. And so she starts talking to the this burrito. Point, everything that they've been through. All the weird shit. Yeah. And then Maya Rudolph pops up. She's like, oh, hi. But that's just a burrito. And like, what does she sprinkle on the burrito for a kick? Envy. Envy. Yeah. Gives it a nice kick. And I was like, why does the show make sense I didn't, and no li- sense at the same time? I didn't listen to that part because she was chewing. And you know how oh, I feel yeah. about that. And I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, oh, no, I can't go around. Yeah. Like, I can't understand you. Stop. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she's like, oh, okay, well, you I can't hear your case. have that in common. Oh, really? Yeah. He, like, turns the TV up really loud because he can't even listen to himself. I think he's also an INFJ. INFJ. What does that mean? Myers-Briggs? No, no, no. But, like, what does that break that down? I'm an INFJ. Introverted. um, Introverting. uh, I can see that. Intuition. I like Feeling judgment. Um, But. But, no. So, she's, like... I can't hear your case, car. You didn't. You didn't. You don't have an advocate, yeah. and you didn't submit the proper form, so you have to go back to the bad place. Bye. And they're like, wait, 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 wait. And so they convince her, and so she's like, fine. I have. I haven't had a she's case in thirty bored. years. Yeah, I'm she's bored. Like, Let's, do, Let's it. do it. And so she she takes Jason to a room to yeah. be tested, and she's like, okay, you have to play this, or you have like she puts the game in front of them. And it's like, but you can all, like it's like a, a Jacksonville versus the, their rival Tennessee yeah. Titans, but you can only play as the Titans. Yeah, and she doesn't let him finish. Her, he her doesn't prompt. Let her. He doesn't let her finish her prompt. He cuts her off. And it's like, I got this. And she's like, well, okay. And he immediately fails the test. You failed. <laughs> and then Tahani has to walk down a hallway of all these people who are talking about her. Which I could never do. I'd open every single door. Send me to the bad place. I think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. I think I could I do it. I want to know what people are talking about. Um, and so she makes it all the way to the end, and then she sees her parents. But it also was a little bit healing for her as well. Definitely. It, yeah. was, it was a cathartic moment, because she got to realize, okay, you know what? I'm better than them. Or, like... Well, not better in that sense, but I'm... The, all this time, they've been making her feel bad, but in reality, they've been the assholes. And I think she saw it for the first time. Yes. And so she confronts her parents, and says, I ate a fucking Cheeto. Fuck y'all. Like... Oh, my God. It's just like, and you know what? It was deafening. deafening. And I was like, it's deafening. Especially a crunchy cheeto. Oh my God. No, even the puffy ones. Oh my God. This show makes no sense and absolute sense at the same time. Because everybody, like, they, that's the thing I love about the humor. But that's the concept of, of, about the good place, too. Like, it, nothing makes sense, but it all actually does. But I love the humor of this show because it's very relatable. It's relatable and it's very observational humor. Yeah. Like, it's Which very Ellen DeGeneres, jam. same. That's why I like yeah. Ellen DeGeneres so much, because it's very observational humor. Yeah. Whereas, like, a lot of comedians are very bombastic and say hateful things or th- yeah. for, for, like, shock value. And a lot of my comedians have been, like, my favorite ones have been moving away from that, so mm-hmm. I greatly appreciate it. And I'm so, also not into, like, slapstick humor. Like, you're I'm never saying. gonna find me watching a Will Ferrell movie. I'm not. I hate Will Ferrell. I'm not. He, he eats human flesh. Oh. I believe that. Work. He has beady serial killer eyes and he scares me i don't find him funny i find him uncomfortable i don't like him yeah uh but she she gets and she fails because she sees her parents of course and then um chidi has to pick between two hats and it takes him 82 minutes but he makes a gray and a brown hat and obviously it's the brown because it matches his fucking pants 
but it should have been the brown wow. one. Like, I was like, just pick the brown one. It makes sense. 82 minutes. So Again, he fails. not the point of his test, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The point of his <laughs> test was just to be able to quickly make a decision. Yeah. And it took him 82 minutes, so he failed. Yeah. And then Eleanor's chest, she doesn't realize she's a test in a test at first. Yeah. Um, but it's so they say, okay, it's you and Cheaty. And, and you, you guys have to, to get to go through. You got to go through. So, like, you have to leave Jason as a honey back. Mm-hmm. But you go through. And so she, like, contemplates it, contemplates it, contemplates it. And she's about to agree to do it. And then, and then, then Cheaty says Chidi. something. And Cheaty says, let's just put ethics aside. And, and then she's like, my man won't do that. No, absolutely. She's like, okay, I, I, I've made a decision. I'm not going through. That's not cheaty. Yeah. Blah, blah. And so she passes her test. Yeah, the only one they, out of the four. And they agreed that all of them would pass or all of them would fail. It's a collective yes. pass fail. So if, exactly. If all if one of them fails, they all go to hell. Yeah. If, if all of them fail, or if all of them pass, then they get to go. Yeah. So she's over here talking, explaining why each person fails. And she's about to say, well, Eleanor passed. And Eleanor's like, no, I failed too. I failed miserably. Yeah. Because she doesn't want them to know that they're damning her to hell. Right. Which is another good person oh thing to God. do. And I would totally do that. I am Eleanor. It's fine. I've accepted it. And so they're about to be damned to to the bad place when Michael and Janet show up. Yeah. Oh, there was a scene where they were about to le- lock Michael in an unmarked room. Yes. Um, with just a New Yorker magazine. Yes. And one of Janet's worst farts that was going to last for 10 million years. Yes. And then. I love this scene, you guys. Me too. And it's it's his boss. Sean. Sean. It's Sean, Michael, and then bad Janet. Yeah. And so, like, she's about to fart. And then she, like, breaks character. And it's like, no, it's actually good Janet. Yeah. Pretending to be bad Janet. And so yes. she kicks his ass. Yes. Into the wall twice. And then they lock him in the room. And the great thing about Darcy Carden is, and I don't know if this was the director's choice, but you never not believe her when she's not playing Janet. Exactly. So whatever, if if she's playing cheaty as Janet, which she has done, if she plays whoever's Janet, bad Janet, like you never, you never see her acting. But I also love the wiggetry they do to help give hints about if this is or isn't her. Yeah. Because... Once but you they realize, didn't do that with this bad Janet. No, they did. Once what? you once you look back and realize this is the bad, this is good Janet. Her. The wig is a little bit different. Um, oh, just a little bit. But like, if you're not paying attention, you're not going to think about it. Yeah, when you realize, I did, oh, I, this is I'm bad look Janet. At it now. This is good Janet pretending to be bad Janet. Yeah. You can see, okay, that wig line's a little bit different. There's yeah. less of a shadow root. Listen, Darcy Carden is just like fan fucking tastic. She's so good. She's incredible. Has she won an Emmy for this? I don't know. I'll look it up. She deserves a fucking yeah. Emmy. All of them do. But like Michael Schur is also the creator of The Good Place. And I just feel like... Not, he was one of the writers. On he the was one of the writers on The Office. On the, yeah, that one. Thing. And he's a creator of The Good Place. Um, and Which I feel like The Office go. has been notoriously overlooked. Like, the fact that fucking yeah, Steve Carell did not win an Emmy yeah. is disgusting. For Michael Scott. Yeah. But anyway, so they come back and like, no, we have to give them a real chance. And this is the end of the season. Um, they have to, we have to give them a real chance. And so the real chance is they're reborn as human. Um, or they're given another chance. They don't die how they die. Well, they decide that they that in order for them to prove that people actually can get better, they have to restart their lives at the point of their death to give them another and chance. And nudge them in the right direction right. to see if they can change. Right, right, right. And that's when the season ends. Cause it ends with Eleanor waking up alive, um, going through her day, and Michael saves her from getting killed. Mm-hmm. And he saves all of them. He, pus- he pushes Chidi. He um, pushes Tahani. He literally is pushing them away from... The bad place. What did he? How did he save Jason? Uh, he opened the the thing. The thing, yeah. Um, so like they save their lives, and then season three starts. So all in all, I really love the season. Like it's such a good season. I feel like they explore a lot of concepts that kind of weren't really explored in the first one because like you kind of think it's a long shot that Eleanor can become a better person, but as the show progresses, you see more and more that actually people are changing, and Michael is changing, Michael's who is changing. an immortal being, and he's starting to sympathize. So even and when you feel like you're not changing, you actually are changing, and not to forget that. I, I love everything about this show. Absolutely, it's just such a good message and such a good fucking show. Season one wasn't nominated for anything. Season two was nominated for lead actor in a comedy series for T- Ted Danson, and then oh. Maya Rudolph as a comedy guest. Guest, yeah. yeah. Did she? Did either of them win? I'm looking. Because Darcy no. Carden needs a Nobody fucking won. Emmy. She's so good. Oh, she's so good. I love her. The episode title, The Janets, was nominated for outstanding writing in a comedy series, and okay, but it lost all of those. Damn. Yeah. But overall, 
This season was very good. Which, I really love the character progression. When we talk about season three, I really want to talk in depth about the Janets. Of course. Because that episode is fucking amazing. I don't know if I remember it. What is it? That's the one where she plays all the different Janets. In her voice? Darcy Carden is playing Cheaty oh, Janet. Yes, yes, Janet. yes, that yes. That's a great one. That's a good episode. Also she deserves playing a fucking... Janet while having a meltdown. The fabric of the universe is breaking down because she is breaking down. Like, it's such so a she takes good them into her fucking void. episode. Right. No, so... Um, this season, though, it, it, like it was really great. I loved how it kind of flipped it on its head because at first you thought, "Oh my god, they're just fucked," mm-hmm. and then you see how, where it's going to go, and it kind of sets the pace for them realizing this isn't fair. Like the afterlife isn't fair, and something needs to be done about so, it. So the consensus is is that everybody in the good place needs to be nominated, including Kristen Bell. And I love Kristen Bell, but I feel like Janet killed it, and Tahani did too. Jason did too. They're all so good. They really are. They've been nominated, but not they haven't won. That's a shame. Yeah, it is. And so, Janet, uh, not Janet, I'm sorry. Sorry. Season, um, season three more explores the actual system and why it's flawed. This introduced the fact that and there is a And also what happens once they've been given a second chance and how it's integral for all of them to find each other again. And exactly. So it's just really... I'm so ready to talk about season three. It's full of nuances about fate and the people in your life. And this this whole show is just a fucking metaphor for life. And it's just such a fucking good show. Well, it's it's strictly analyzing life and what it means to be a good person. And how to be a good person and what that means. And even if the afterlife is fucked, you should still do these things. And what do we owe each other? Right, yeah. It's so good. I'm so excited. Every system is flawed, but not humans. That's what I got out of it. And, And it's also that humans always have the ability to be better. Yep. And they make everything better. I just love it. They're so this show is so uplifting. To it's me. such a great show. Yeah. Please watch it. It's so good, guys. But uh, with that, we'll be right back with our rewinds. Hi. Hello. <laughs> well, welcome How back. You doing? I, I'm I'm alive. No, I'm here. I'm good. good. I'm, I'm feeling it. That's the good place. <laughs> it's not the good place. It it's good Earth. Place. Being alive. Well, we're here and we're alive. Yeah. It's a good place. So, welcome back. Um, now we are going to end our show with our Ray of Lights, which is the part of the I show. I love doing this part of the show now. Like, I know we randomly introduced it and then just stuck with it, but uh-huh. I love this part. Well, no, it's, it's it's a good way to reflect on your week. And, and I feel like we did it when, thing, like, episodes were heavy and dark. And then, mm-hmm. like, now we do them no matter what. Yes. So, I have two Ray of Lights. Um, my first Ray of Light was somebody told me that somebody else told them that they thought I looked like a wizard, not knowing who I was. Um, because I, I was... So apparently this happened. Oh my God, why do I fucking see this? What, that I look like a wizard? Yes. It's my my long flowing jacket. Is that so what it is? Maybe so. It is, yeah. And well, so... Also, you have like a fucking crystal around your neck. I do. I do. It's it's selenite. <laughs> it's supposed to bring good luck, but I just really like how There's it looks. There's a crystal around his neck. <laughs> um, selenite wards off bad spirits, but that's not why I wear it. I and just wear it because I love and your crystals. Hair. I get it. Okay. Um, but anyway, so I was walking to my best friend Taylor's birthday party last year, uh-huh. and her friend's fiance just didn't know who I was and saw mm-hmm. me walking on the street because this is downtown, so I was walking to the loft. She mm-hmm. oh, that guy looks like a wizard. What a compliment. I know. And then and then she's like, oh, well, you're going to be sitting having dinner with a wizard because that's Taylor's friend. And he's like, nah. And she's like, yes. And I was like, oh, my God. Somebody said I look like a wizard. It's the biggest compliment I've ever had yeah, in like a long time. I can see it now. Oh, my God. Stop. I'm blushing. And your hair is long now? It is long. I, although, I'm thinking about cutting it some because it's driving I'm, me crazy. I like the longness. I like it, but, like, there's one part that's, like, right here is longer than the rest of it. I'm ready for a new style. Me? Yeah. Oh, no. I love my style. I'll never get rid of the style. Okay. Like. I love changing hair. It's evolved. I'm not saying I don't like Mario's hair. I just love when people change their hair. Like, I originally had long all over. Like, it was. No, I'm not down. But it was still shorter. It just wasn't shaved short yeah. and now i shear the sides and just leave the top long i like it um i love mario's hair thanks it's one of the first but she wants I to change it so you. she's lying but i but no. i constantly <laughs> change my hair oh so you know i don't i'm, I'm very a chameleon like i'm very i'm gonna be firm in my style choices with hair because this hair is also most flattering on my face because of a very round face so a side slip bang a side slip bang makes your face look longer and leaner uh, i'll try um, any style it doesn't matter to me and then short sides makes your hair look narrower as well because it brings more volume on the top. So it's a very thought out process. No, not me. I just be like, let's go platinum. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> no. Let's get a piece of I'm afraid of, of damaging my hair. Okay. 
So that's my first one. My second ray of light was I was able to lean on my friend and she really helped me deal with something. And I'm Shut fully up. That's deal. my ray of light. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that's, that's what that meant. That's why I wrote one-on-one. Well, I thought that meant like you talking to your boss and becoming, getting like your boss. No, no, no. But it was for both of you. But like... I just Mario and I had a really late night to like, like one of the best def- friend conversations that you have when you get closer to somebody and I feel like it was therapeutic for Mario I feel like it was therapeutic for me I feel like I was able to help and bring some perspective and honestly like I feel like a weight has been like I feel like a different person honestly if, like like the text message leading up to the phone call I was really worried about you uh-huh. I was like oh what's going on and so I, I just talked about something that I haven't talked with anybody else about and at least this openly and honestly about it. Yeah. And, um, which is why I want you to listen to in my head. Is that the, the, the Ariana Cummings? Grande song? Oh, in my, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, I've only had one perspective on the situation and she really helped me look at the situation for what it is and forgive myself. Yes, absolutely. We all make um, mistakes. Yeah. And I'm just very hard on myself. And when you're absolutely. so hard on yourself for so long, get it. Um, speak those truths because I have this issue too. <laughs> well, when you're so hard on yourself for so long and you're so in your head, you kind of build the shame of what you did. Or did, it's not that I did like you this awful thing. You shame yourself before you let anybody else shame you because yes. that shame will drive you not to make the same mistakes that you've made previously. Absolutely, but also That's please don't I think I I like did some no, no, awful no. crime. He he was like, oh my god, I'm so ashamed, and I don't want you to look at me differently. And then he told me what it was. I was like, what are you talking about? I've I've been through shit like that too. Like yeah. that's normal. Um, but also like you're ashamed because you hold yourself to a higher standard. I hold myself to a ridiculous standard yeah. in a lot of aspects of my life, and I but think also. That's not it's not healthy like getting i never really let my let my be my abuse as a child be an excuse and but as stephanie would say it's not an excuse it's not an excuse but it's it's it does, an explanation it does shape the way that you respond to things absolutely and I, i'm not that person who will allow that to shape me or do that but also get adding perspective to what i was going through as that being a part of it and me doing what I did yeah. really opened my eyes to the situation to be like, you know what? I can forgive myself it's, for that yeah, because what I did wasn't terrible, but what I did... It was terrible I, for you. To me, yeah. Yes, but like, it wasn't terrible as in like you're this terrible person. Yeah, and I just couldn't forgive myself for what happened. And also, it's not that it's an excuse, but it does kind of help you step back and see the full picture and that like, you know, your age... And mm-hmm. what you go through at different ages create different responses to situations. And it's normal. Yeah. Like, everybody has issues like this. It's just really helped a lot. And I feel I'm a lot I'm so better. happy. Because that so was my ray of light. Mar- I've been leaning on Mario for a lot of stuff. And it felt nice to have him, like, lean on me a little bit. And it brought us closer together. Absolutely. And also, I don't know what the fuck is going on with our relationship now because like a year ago we talked at work and now i feel like i can't go 30 minutes without i know i feel the same it's way so it's fucking like weird. things will happen i'm just like oh i can't wait till jessica I'm, about this it's so i can't wait till jessica weird. like it's so strange <laughs> and sometimes at work like we don't eat lunch together because i'm like we like we're always together yeah and then now i'm like well i'm just gonna fucking sit with mario now because what else am i gonna do it's, it's yeah mario and i's relationship has changed drastically and i'm grateful me too fucking grateful and i will not cry i've cried enough i feel like <laughs> <laughs> she's dehydrated y'all she i needs am water. so fucking dehydrated i haven't even had wine because i'm like no bitch you can't You're gonna your kidneys will shut down <laughs> but no i'm just very grateful and i'm excited to see where our friendship goes but i honestly think taking time out of the week to yeah, have a long conversation together Snaps in person to it- has really bonded us quickly because it, You're connecting with somebody on a deep level and being vulnerable. It also about- shows me, though, like, not to cut you off, but, like, mm-hmm. for me, remember when I was, like, it's forcing a friendship? And I didn't mean it, like, in a negative way. But for mm-hmm. me, it was, like, stopping and taking the time to, like, dedicate a real genuine connection with a human. Like, mm-hmm. what's that? what that has done for the two of us. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times we're in a social situation or, like, we're trying to just, like, escape from life. Like, you have dinner with friends because you need a moment to yourself. And you yeah. need a moment to be, like who you are it's so different than sitting in a room making eye contact and like arguing about things and then like still high-fiving when you walk yeah. out the door you know like it's so therapeutic everybody should get a podcast like what the fuck absolutely like, like let's do it guys because like 
I, I've talked about feeling overwhelmed. It's like, well, maybe you should take a step back from the podcast. It's like, absolutely not. Yeah, That's a huge that. part of my self-care. Like, uh, So for me, like, I tend to ignore self-care and throw myself into a hundred different things. So sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like, you have to take a break now. You have to do it. Like, it is a part of my self-care, mm-hmm. but there are days where I'm like, you maybe need a break. Yeah. Because I, I will derail my own self. Well, that's fine. Like, I, no, but for me, like, our break was a good break when we took a break for Christmas. Yeah. No, and stuff. we that needed to necessary. take a break for Christmas. Um, but, like, I would never stop doing the podcast just because things were getting hard or whatever. Because I feel, oh. for me, it helps me. That's my INTJ. Yeah, maybe so. I don't want so. anyone around me when I'm upset. That's no. what it is. But I, I need... Which is not healthy, and I know that. I'm working on it. Well, I'm, I'm the kind of person that if I'm upset and I talk about something that I'm passionate about, it helps me not ignore it, but like dull the pain. Oh, God. What? I feel like I'm the opposite. So many feelings would come out. It wouldn't even be rational. But even when feelings come out, it feels But good. not when it needs to be rational. Yeah. But sometimes you don't need to be rational. <sighs> I don't know who you are right now. <laughs> You're such a T. You're such a T. <laughs> I don't know who you are. Um, cause I'm I find every day to be rational and like guard my opinions and feel like I, every day that's my life. Well, sometimes emotions are very abstract and hard to define. Mm-hmm. And, and also I don't trust my emotions. Expressing that, albeit it may come out weird, you still need to express it sometimes. Well, I've cried so much the last five days. I'm good for the next two years. Yeah. I feel like you've cried more during this podcast. I have cried so much this week alone that uh-huh. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. I, there, mm, mm, that's not normal for me. I've cried. For you, yes, but you're also evolving. I've cried You're every allowing day. yourself like, to be I vulnerable. Can't, I'm, I'm going to start crying now. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Shut listen, it down. Listen, when Mari, Shut it down. when Mari and I were having a little spoiler conversation... And I was getting ready to tell him what moved me the most. And I, like, couldn't talk. Yeah. No, she, like, my voice tears changed completely. Screaming and down I, her face. And I was like, oh, fuck. Guys, and I started I crying. This, like, two days ago. Like, I don't understand. Oh, it's so fucking Sometimes weird. things are just so poignant that they, they touch that's, you on such a deep level. That's what's been happening with me it's lately. Poignant. Like, yeah. I feel like I've been really honest with people in my life. I've had really difficult conversations. And things have been, like, poignant and, like reinforcing and validating the way that I feel and mm-hmm. it's it's been emotional for me and it's a journey guys yeah um, but I will not become an emotional person but don't beat yourself up I'm not you're it's allowed, just weird it's you're just allowed fucking weird to be emotional whatever I got emotional at work this is my ray of light are we ready for my ray of yeah. light are you good yeah okay yeah. Um, I had my first one-on-one with my supervisor, which is very different for me because I came from a call center and the call center, you had one-on-ones weekly. Uh I am like very much like Mario. I hold myself to a higher standard. I am down on myself. We've been working overtime. I've been leaving every day. Like I could have done 10 more cases or I could have done like 20 more cases or like, did I do that right? And like really stressing and checking my work and like. I'm I'm just hard on myself and it's something that I deal with in therapy all the time where like it's the language that I use to berate myself to do better is not Mm -hmm. it's not good and I still struggle with it I'm better at it Um, but I had my first one-on-one and I was very very nervous but also excited because I thrive on feedback Mm -hmm. and I went in with my notebook and I was like okay it's obviously going to be a compliment sandwich so just focus on what you need to focus on ignore the compliment because I don't do compliments and there wasn't a compliment sandwich and it was all praise and it was just numbers like because it wasn't even like you're doing a great job it was like numbers to back up like Mm -hmm. what I had done and I didn't have any losses and I didn't have any mistakes and I'm being given more responsibility and there are going to be different banks on my thing now and I had to say okay great thank you I want to learn as much as you want to give me thank you so much I really appreciate it one of the banks I'm taking on is very nitpicky and so they expect perfection so that that felt like a big vote of confidence for me Mm -hmm. and then I had to walk to Mario's desk and I had tears in my eyes and I was like I I cannot believe that was my first one-on-one I respect and like my supervisor so fucking much to get the high praise. Thing, to get high praise and to not only just get like high praise and no negative things to get high praise with I'm ready to give you more work because to me that's the ultimate thing like Absolutely. you know that I can do more give me more and so it just I had tears in my eyes and Mario got up to hug me and I was like don't fucking touch me because I will break the fuck down <laughs> I hugged her it was so bad don't touch me when I'm crying like I was gonna tell you don't do that anymore <laughs> it was very very emotional for me as like a um 
as a person who struggles with perfection. Well, at first I thought she got in trouble because she had tears in her eyes. I was like, yeah. oh, what happened? Yeah, it was because that face was me controlling my emotions. And then like, she's I like, I just had the best one one. I was like, oh, thank yeah. God. My God, I, I have tears in my eyes. Yeah. Aww. It just was really, it's nice to go somewhere where you feel validated. I, yes. The last year at the job that I thought was going to be my profession for the rest of my life caused so much severe depression and panic attacks. And then working for the law firm didn't work out. And I thought that was going to be my thing. So to go into something that's completely off of that path, off of my path that I'm excelling and doing well, that I never thought that I would mm -hmm. like, I doubt myself constantly i know i have a big personality but i have a lot of self-doubt um i it, it i just was so happy mm -hmm. so happy. it's a very vindicating moment for you yeah congratulations it felt good and i'm very lucky because my my team is drama free and everybody works really hard it feels like a good group so <laughs> They're all still socially awkward, just a little bit, but I can deal now because now I get it. <laughs> and At first, girl, it was really confusing. And the girl with the mirror is gone, so that was the biggest hurdle. Oh my god, she was hysterical. <laughs> was she? I mean, or just the mirror in general? <laughs> the mirror in general. <laughs> and then she passed that mirror on to a girl that I went through training with, and I was like, "What's going on? Do I need a giant mirror?" Does she separate her screens like she did before? Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know. It makes me feel like you're going to strain your neck. That's turning like forty-five degrees or ninety degrees every single time you have to go oh between my screens. God. So do I want to? Do you want to hear what I think? I had this, a really bad tension headache this week, guys. Like, it would not go away. I took ibuprofen. I couldn't sleep. Like, loud noises were hard for me to deal with. Like, in the movie theater, I was like this. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I needed to cry. Maybe so. Because that's tension. Because I woke up. up for the first time today without a headache. And it's been like five days. Mm -hmm. So This means you need to cry more. Well, I mean, if it took like 10 years to get a tension headache, I think I can deal for the next 10. Okay. That's not the thought process, girl. Sorry. It's I don't know if Stephanie listens to your as body. Like, I don't know if Stephanie's listening, but Stephanie, I know we have stuff to talk about because there's a whole bunch of red flags in this episode for you. <laughs> does she listen? I don't know, but I feel like she does. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie, if you're listening. Oh, I love her so much. Um, She's such a good therapist. But also, like, it, it couldn't be that, oh, you lasted 10 years before this started happening, but now. This is the result of you holding in your thing. You get a tension headache. And also, I've been in therapy for like a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. So I feel... Maybe like, you're ready. You may not feel ready, but you may oh, be ready. Oh, I'll never be ready. The... But like I had to talk with Stephanie about that. I was like, you're going to have to push me. Yeah. I was like, because I will ignore you. So every time I know you need to cry, just need to start playing anyone. Oh my God, yes. And just lock you in the room and stare. Don't do that. I don't want eye contact. <laughs> It'll make you cry harder. But you know what? I feel like we need to do the um, deprivation the tanks. Yeah, yeah. Just, my tax return's about to come back. Well, like I'm ready. <laughs> but with that being said, please like, rate, and review us on iTunes, Spotify, um, Stitcher, Podbean, whatever. Share us with your friends. Um, write in if you have any questions or comments or concerns. And um, watch the Good Place, guys. It's please such a good watch thing. the Good Place. It's really a just an eye opening experience. It's, the, it's so good, and when people are like, "Oh, I can't get into it," I'm like, "You have unresolved issues that you you're do, not willing." But to face. also, just get past the first like three episodes, and you'll be good. I love the first episode. I know, but some people, it's so weird at first. Like, you have to get used to the weirdness before you can accept oh, you're in okay. this world. Because my mom's me. not a fantasy person. And I was like, once you, I. once you accept the world that you're in yeah. and then go with it, you have such a good time. Fantasy is a weird thing for me, but watch The Good Place, guys. Please do. Yeah, it's so good. Connect with a friend. Make sure your friends are okay. Support girls. Support girls supporting girls. and Plan dates to go to your sleep de or your deprivation. Sensory absolutely. Deprivation don't, uh, don't plan to vote for any Republicans. Vote blue. Vote blue. Please vote blue. Get involved. Mara and I got involved with Grassroots. We're yeah. going to do our first event next weekend. Saturday. Yep. We're we going to go Saturday. Up. We should sign up after this. Okay. We'll so we can up. commit. Yeah. Because I feel really bad. I'm pulling but, it up right now. But thank you for listening. We'll talk to you or we'll, we'll, we'll speak with you next week. And... Bye. We'll speak at you next At week. you. Yeah. <laughs>